Good morning, everyone. Uh, I want to thank you for joining us this morning uh, for the free uh, preseason uh, men's and women's basketball uh, coaches call with the media. Uh, I'm Todd Lamb, Assistant Commissioner for Communications at the Southland Conference. Again, thank you for joining us today. Um, I want to remind everyone uh, that this call is being streamed live on the Southland Conference digital network. It will be available for playback uh, later on. Uh, so, so just please remember that we are recording this for playback as well. Um, let me go over a few guidelines for uh, the call today. We do restrict the call to official news gathering media members only. Uh, the general public, including fans and fan websites, are pro prohibited from participating uh, during the live call. We ask that you do not place the call on hold or use any speaker uh, phone function while on the call today. Uh, we have muted all lines. Um, you may unmute your line uh, by pressing star six at any time, um, but we do ask that you uh, uh, remute your line after you're finished uh, asking your question or coaches when you're, when you're through. Um, media, prior to asking a question, we would ask you to identify yourself by name and media organization. We would also in, uh, encourage you to be mindful of others on the call and limit follow-up questions uh, to give everyone on the call an opportunity uh, to speak with the coaches during their window avail of availability. Uh, any violation of these guidelines may lead to immediate disconnection uh, from the call. Um, we sent out media guides by mail on Monday, so those should be arriving uh, soon. Um, if you don't have it and need to access it, we have posted those on the Southland Conference website this morning at southland.org, um, so, so feel free to check those out. We also have team previews uh, for, for all 10 men's and all 10 women's teams there, uh, so you, you will want to check uh, that out as well. Uh, last month, uh, a couple weeks ahead of this call, we announced the uh, men's and women's preseason polls in all conference teams. Uh, certainly want to bring your attention to those um, in advance of this call. Uh, we're doing this call a little bit later than we've done in the past, uh, assisting media uh, who might have basketball more on their radar uh, the week that, of the season uh, openers as opposed to a few weeks out. So. Hopefully uh, the format works for everybody. Uh, we'll, we'll be speaking uh, to all 10 men's and all 10 women's coaches um, by, by school, um, and the schedule was emailed uh, previously. Uh, the men's preseason polls, uh, Oral Roberts, the uh, Southland Conference newcomer, was tabbed by both the league coaches and sports information directors to win the conference title in its first season. Um, they joined the, the Southland from the Summit League in July. Uh, they're coming off a regular season conference championship and a trip to the NIT. Uh, they picked up seven first-place votes from the coaches and six from the SIDs, uh, garnering 77 points in each poll. Um, in order in the coaches' poll behind um, ORU is Stephen F. Austin, number uh, three, Northwestern, number four, McNeese State, number five, Lamar, number six, southeastern Louisiana, number seven, Sam Houston State. We had an eighth-place tie between Nickel State and Central Arkansas, and Texas A&M Corpus Christi was picked tenth. In the SID poll, uh, behind ORU is number two, Stephen F. Austin, a third-place tie between Lamar and McNeese State. Uh, fifth place was Northwestern State, number six, Sam Houston State, number seven, southeastern Louisiana, number eight, Nickel State, number nine, Central Arkansas, and number 10, Texas A&M Corpus Christi. Uh, in the preseason all-conference teams, uh, there were three men's players that returned from last year to automatically uh, uh, earn a spot on the preseason uh, teams this year. Seven institutions placed at least one uh, student-athlete on the teams, including uh, three schools that placed two. Uh, the three returning all-conference players uh, Antonio Bostic from SFA, uh, Shamir Davis from Northwestern, and LaQuentin Miles from Central Arkansas. Uh, behind them, to round out the first team, Brandon Fortenberry from Southeastern Louisiana and uh, Taylor Smith from Stephen F. Austin. The second team includes Warren Niles from Oral Roberts, Dante Cannon 
from McNeese, James Holman from Northwestern State, Fred Hunter from Nichols, and Stephen Roundtree from Oral Roberts. Those releases are posted on the Southland Conference website uh, if you are interested in, in, in those or if you want to reach out to the conference office, we'd be happy to email those to you. Um, but hopefully you can, can find those on our website. Uh, in the women's uh, preseason polls, McNeese State was selected uh, as the preseason favorite to win the conference uh, by both uh, the league coaches and sports information directors. Uh, McNeese is a two-time defending conference tournament champion. Uh, they received seven first-place votes and 78 points in the coaches' poll and six first-place votes and 77 points in the SID poll. Um, following them in the coaches' poll, number two, Stephen F. Austin, number three, Central Arkansas, number four, Oral Roberts, number five, Sam Houston State, number six, Lamar, number seven, Nichols State, number eight, Texas A&M Corpus Christi, number nine, Southeastern Louisiana, and number 10, Northwestern State. In the uh, SID poll, Central Arkansas was picked set, uh, to finish second behind the Cowgirls. Uh, Oral Roberts was picked third. Number four was Stephen F. Austin. Number five, Sam Houston State. Number six, Lamar. Number seven, Nichols State. Number eight, Southeastern Louisiana. Number nine, Texas A&M Corpus Christi. And number uh, 10, Northwestern State. Uh, in the preseason all-conference teams, um, uh, Central Arkansas uh, forward Megan Herbert uh, highlights a talented list of seven returning uh, players that earned automatic selection on those teams. Um, uh, but, but behind her, joining her on the first team, Brittany Martin from Sam Houston, Ashlyn Baggett from McNeese State, Callie Lloyd from Lamar, and Sequina Thomas from Sam Houston State. On the second team, uh, Caitlin Baggett, K.K. Babin, Portia Roberts, uh, Alicia Allen, and Kevy Looper. Uh, so those are your preseason uh, all-conference teams on the women's side. I want to point out a uh, significant uh, uh, celebration uh, in the Southland Conference this year. The league is celebrating its 50th anniversary. Um, so celebrating a half century of academic achievement and competitive success. Uh, we're going to commemorate uh, the 50th anniversary um, beginning in 2013 with basketball. Um, the celebration will coincide with the Southland 17, 17 championship sports uh, during the calendar year, uh, starting with men's basketball. The season uh, begins Friday uh, and will continue through the 50th football season next fall. Uh, we did post a release on southland.org uh, and sent that out to you. Uh, we'll be announcing further um, uh, bits and pieces to that uh, celebration as, as we move forward here. Also want to bring your attention to a re release that went out uh, in mid-October, um, the Southland basketball uh, television package. Um, is, has been exclusively picked up by ESPN3 uh, for the 2012-13 season. It's the largest um, package in conference history, including 22 games uh, the initial year of the agreement. Um, we have uh, one game uh, in November, that's Oklahoma at ORU, and then we'll be doing uh, Thursday night double headers uh, beginning January 10th and continuing through the last week of the regular season, um, and as well as the um, Friday games at the Southland Conference Basketball Tournament, which will be held again at the Leonard E. Merrill Center in Katy. Um, the two women's semifinals and the two men's semifinals will be on ESPN3. Um, and the uh, women's tournament championship also on ESPN3. The uh, men's tournament championship will be covered again by uh, ESPN2 and available on the Watch ESPN app. So check out that release if, uh, online if you, if you need more information or, or please reach out to us here at the conference office. All right, I believe now we'll go ahead and move on to the coaches portion of the call. Uh, we, we're scheduled to have uh, Corliss Williamson uh, from Central Arkansas uh, join us next. I want to remind him that he may need to press star six to unmute his phone line, and uh, we'll ask him to make an opening statement uh, to, get, to get us going here. Um, but let, let me introduce, it looks like he is on the line. 
Uh, Corliss, are you with us? Yes, sir. All right. Uh, you're in your uh, third year at Central Arkansas, carry a 13 and 45 record, uh, finished sixth in the East Division last year. Coach, why don't you uh, give us an opening statement before we open it up for questions? All right. Uh, you know, what more can we say? You know, the basketball season is here. Uh, you know, we're very excited about another great year. Uh, you know, playing Southland basketball, we know it's going to be very competitive this year. And uh, going into our third season, we're we're looking to uh, to make some improvements uh, on our record as we've done in the past two years. So uh, we're very excited. Uh, I think our guys have been working extremely hard in the off season, as everyone has. And uh, we're looking forward to uh, playing some, some good basketball and, and enjoying the competition in the Southland this year. We're just a few days from your opener at Arizona State. How has your, um, your preseason practices uh, gone for you? Uh, you know, preseason has uh, been going okay. You know, uh, so one day I like them, the other day I love them, and one day I hate them. So, um, you know, it, it's kind of typical early in the year. You know, you're going to have your good days and bad days, but we're, we're pretty uh, – we're pretty excited about our chances of, of being competitive this year. Our guys have uh, really worked hard in their off season. I think this summer having a chance to work with them uh, definitely helped, and we're just anxious to see how we're going to fare once we play against someone else. All right, we'll go ahead and open it up for questions now for Corliss Williamson, the head men's coach at Central Arkansas Media. I do want to remind you, you may need to press star six to unmute your phone line would also encourage uh, you to identify yourself by name and media organization prior to asking a question. Uh, Corliss, uh, this is David McCollum from Long Camp Democrat. And, hey, Dave. Uh, How you doing? I'm good. And I uh, just want to get over you. What's, what's different with your team this year? Uh, I think what's different with our team is uh, is, is their attitude. I think they've, they've come with the mentality that, you know, we're going to trust uh, each other. We're, we're going to trust the coaches, and we're going to come together and, and, and do what we have to to uh, to be competitive this year. Um, you know, we've got some guys who've had some experience now. Uh, we got three seniors who were junior college transfers last year, so they they're more in the comfort zone now, understanding what we want to accomplish and what their roles are. So, um, I think just the trust factor is something that that's improved over the past two years. And uh, does it help that you have more players who maybe understand the style of play that you want to play? Yes, it does. You know, and uh, I tip my hat to all the young men who's been through this program um, under me the past two years who I didn't recruit. I mean, they they bust their tail to uh, to try to adapt to a different style and play a style that they really weren't suited to play, that they weren't recruited for. So uh, they did a great job in, in trying to help us change the culture here, but. Uh, this year we do have guys who are more suited um, to play the style of basketball that we want to play. Uh, we have more athletes, uh, a little bit longer. So uh, that that definitely helps when you have people who are actually recruited for this style. It helps them really buy into what we're trying to accomplish. Hey, Corliss, this is Jimmy Trammell from the newspaper in uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma. You've got a senior on your team, a kid named Robert Crawford, who is literally from – the high school that is across the street from Oral Roberts University, Victory Christian. Uh, can you talk about Robert and what you expect out of him this year? You know, I thought Robert came on well in conference play. Uh, he started shooting the ball extremely well um, last year. Uh, of course, you know, when you come from junior college, there's always a transitional period there where you're trying to get adjusted to the speed of uh, Division One basketball as well as uh, to a new style or a new coach. So, uh, with Robert, he did a great job this off season of getting in the gym, uh, working on his game, and uh, he's been a leader for us at the beginning of this preseason. You know, he's out there trying to help the young freshmen get acclimated to what we're doing, and uh, he's he's playing some of his best basketball now. So we really look forward to having Robert um, step out and lead us this year and have a great senior season. I appreciate it. Other questions for Corliss Williamson at Central Arkansas. Coach, this is Lincoln Rose with uh, the Southlands Television Package coming up this year. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm doing good, Lincoln. How are you? Doing well. Uh, obviously, we we talked to you last year. You mentioned one of the things you'd like to see in a young program is be able to take care of their own home court. Uh, the women were able to do that uh, going 16-0 last year. With the new double header format, 
in conference play? Do you anticipate there being some momentum coming off those women's games that you can try to take advantage of? We sure hope so. I mean, uh, I watched some of the women's games last year, and the, the atmosphere was great. Um, I thought our fans really supported them. They even they supported us as well. But when you have uh, both teams playing on the same night, I think that's just going to um, – you know, help increase that enthusiasm, especially when the women are playing well, and and hopefully that they'll stay in and, and continue to support us as well. So um, we're very excited about this year. We know in order to be successful in conference or just to have any type of uh, a successful season, you have to take care of home court. And, uh, we didn't do that last year enough, and uh, it's something that we're we're preaching this year, and we we want to take the right steps in in, in doing that. Is there a returning player that most people will be familiar with but may not recognize this year, perhaps uh, may able to make a significant improvement in their game this offseason? Uh, well, one of the guys, uh, he, he kind of stepped up for us last year, uh, was Jarvis Garner. But, um, I mean, he, he's really taking this game to a, to a different level this year. I mean, he's shooting the ball extremely well. Uh, I mean, his defense has really improved. Uh you know, but then you look at some of the guys from last year, Jordan Harks. And I think that's one of the guys who was kind of up and down last year, but he's he's starting to play the style of the way that we envisioned him playing when he first transferred here. And I think that's one player that's uh, that we're very excited about with the energy that he brings to the court. And finally, just in this non-conference play, is, is there a, a question you need answered, uh, something that you expect that you'll be able to find out about your team in the first month? Oh, yeah. Um you know, we're going to be shorthanded. Uh, Anthony Borden's not eligible. Uh, we're working on getting him eligible for, uh, for the second half of the season. So uh, the question for me is how are we going to handle it when we don't have, uh, you know, Anthony inside to anchor us and hold us down. So uh, we're going to see how well we can rally around each other and pull together and rebound the basketball with his absence. Thank you. No, thank you. Any other questions for Corliss Williamson at Central Arkansas? All right, Coach, appreciate your time. Best of luck this year. Hey, thank you. Thanks for having me. You bet. Sandra, Sandra, are you with us? I'm with you, yes. All right. Joined now by Sandra Rushing, the women's coach at Central Arkansas. Um, the Sugar Bears coming off a 24-7 and season, 14-2 uh, and uh, in league play, uh, for, finished first in the East. Uh, obviously, uh, you're new uh, to the program, but, you know, tell us about this team uh, that you've inherited and, and and your 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 thoughts heading into your first season in Conway well I mean they um I'm very fortunate I'm coming into a situation where you know I have a veteran team I have six seniors and they've absolutely been wonderful uh, we're still at the point trying to figure each other out um you know I've asked them to uh, adjust and do a few things that, that I would like them to do, but I'm also having to adjust a little bit my coaching philosophy. Um, you know, because when you have six seniors, you know, they they spent their whole career with a, a coach and then a new coach comes in, and, and change can be scary. But I'm really um, excited about this year and about excited about, you know, South and Conference. There's a lot of great coaches and great players in the conference, and uh, but the players have absolutely come in and worked hard, been wonderful. Uh, you know, Megan Herbert, everything that everybody has said, she's such a winner and um, and a leader. She's, she's a silent leader, but she's really been a joy in practice. All right, we'll go ahead and open it up for questions now for Sandra Rushing, the women's coach at Central Arkansas. Media Sandra, uh, good morning. This is Len Rollins with uh, Southland Television Network. How are you? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm well. Welcome to the league. Thank you. I'm excited. I, I know you are. Um, I've, I've got a question. You mentioned uh, that you were trying to uh, incorporate a few changes uh, that that uh, uh, will be new to to your team. How is it that that your philosophy or style might be a little bit different uh, from what we've seen out of the Sugar Bears in previous years? Well, you know, I'm. I'm more of a defensive-minded coach, and, uh, you know, they, I think they led the league last year in defense, and there's just a few adjustments as far as defensively that I would like to do, and, and we're getting better defensively. And, you know, the the biggest thing is is that we're going to have to go play some games and learn each other, and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm really demanding a lot on the defensive end. 
Well, it's something that, that as you say, obviously uh, defense is not a, a foreign concept to Conway. Right, absolutely. There's just a few, you know, everybody has different philosophies on how they're going their strategy going into the game defensively. And, you know, they were a great defensive team last year. And like I said, they got used to one thing, and we're tweaking just, just a little bit. I mean, I'm not going to uh, come in here and ask them to learn something within a couple of months. Uh, but they've really uh, have bought in. And like I said, getting better, and then I'm making some adjustments. And I think you have to do that coming into a program when you have six seniors. Well, I guess one one final question, please. I guess you get this a lot, but um, what's your your overall impression of the league uh, as an outsider, quote unquote, uh, who will be getting familiar with it very shortly? Um, tell me about uh, what impresses you about about the league and women's basketball. I think the athleticism, the players, uh, the, the coaches, you know, I, I've been from it. Well, I've watched the Southland Conference for a long time, and I, there's really some great coaches in this conference, and uh, it's very, very competitive. And, you know, you have to be prepared every night because you can't take any opponent lightly. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Coach, uh, this is David McCollum from Long Camp Democrat Conway, and, uh, just wanted to ask you, as a, as a, with a veteran team coming in as a new coach, has it has anything surprised you about this team? Uh, well, just coming in, their work ethic is, has been wonderful. Uh, now, when I say that, I don't mean necessarily surprise you. Expect that, but their their drive uh, in practice, they're wanting to, wanting to get better. And sometimes you think, you know, when you had, you have six seniors, that you know that they not trying to, to get better. They, they've settled. But this team has not settled. And, and that I've really, really been impressed with that. Because I have challenged them every day in, in different aspects, uh, on and off the floor. Other questions for Sandra Rushing at Central Arkansas? Hey, Coach, this is Jimmy Trammell from the newspaper in Tulsa. Uh, how's Rogers coming back from the knee injury? She has, uh, she's looking good in practice. Uh, she is, uh, she worked at very, very hard to get back. Uh, she's in, in shape and knee strong. She's moving well. Now she does have a knee brace on, and of course she's going to wear that through the year, but uh, she's moving well, and I'm so glad that she's back on the floor. She, she's a tremendous athlete, and she gets up and down the floor, and, uh, you know, being that senior with that experience, uh, you know, she, attitude is wonderful. Um, and I like the way she plays defense, and she really gets in rebounds. I appreciate it. Anything else for Sandra Rushing at Central Arkansas? All right, Coach, appreciate your time and wish you the best of luck this season. Thank you so much. You bet. Uh, moving uh, on down through the schedule, uh, J.P. Piper from Nickel State is scheduled to join us. Coach, are you here? Uh, as a reminder, you may need to press star six. Got it. Need, okay. Uh, joined now by J.P. Piper, the head coach at Nichols State. Uh, he is 88 and 143 uh, through eight years at the school last year. The Colonels uh, finished 10 and 20 overall, 6 and 10 to finish fourth in the East. Um, and uh, another uh, fourth consecutive appearance in the Southland Conference Tournament. Coach, how about we get an opening statement, and then we'll open it up for questions. Sure. Um, very excited about the season being here, and um, very excited about this group of young men. Uh, we only lost one player off of last year's team, and we have Fred Hunter coming back, uh, joining the, the ranks. So I feel like we have a little bit of experience and um, some pretty good hands to uh, go compete for a conference title. Um, and, and looking forward to doing that. Okay, we'll go ahead and open it up for questions now for J.P. Piper at Nichols State. Media, you may need to press star six to unmute your phone line, and we do encourage you to uh, identify yourself by name and affiliation prior to asking a question. Hey, Coach, this is Jimmy Trammell from the newspaper in Tulsa. Just scanning your roster, Four Australians and, and one kid from Brazil. Uh, it, you must uh, 
have a heck of a recruiting budget, or you're, or you're just kind of maxing out, uh, you know, where to go find players? Well, we've uh, we've had a history of Australian players here, so it kind of feeds itself at this point. Uh, I have an assistant coach who played for me here, uh, who's from Australia, and a, another former player from Australia that's that's also in the college ranks at another school. So. Uh, we have some connections over there that allow us to uh, recruit cheaply in Australia using uh, video and and uh, just relationships that we've established. Uh, and, and Australia has actually been very good to us. Uh, some of our best players over the last few years have come from there. Without those connections, I'm guessing it, it would be really uh, difficult to evaluate and really know what you're getting over there. Absolutely. Uh, there's no question about that. Uh, we've developed a high level of trust and Honestly, on the front end, had to take some chances and, and, and missed on some kids. And we're just fortunate, I guess, to get it right. Um, but um, you, you guys being new to the league probably don't know our history, but we, we took over, I took over a program that was in pretty bad shape. And we couldn't get kids stateside very interested in coming to play for us. So we decided we would just kind of do something radical. And I signed eight Australians the first year. Wow. And um, they didn't all work out, but we managed to call through and, and get a few that, that did work out. And, and those relationships have uh, helped us continue to get some of those guys over here. And um, it's getting easier because of the relationships, and some of those kids actually pursue us now. So uh, we found a little niche. You know, we'd like to get uh, you know some of the more talented kids like some of the other schools in the States are getting. We hadn't quite turned that corner. But, um, you know, it's it's good to be wanted, and there are kids over there that want to come play at Nichols, so that's, that's always positive. Thank you. Sure. Other questions for J.P. Piper at Nichols State? Coach, talk a little bit about um, the return of Fred Hunter and, and, and what the, he brings to your team. Yeah, I'm really excited about that. Uh, Fred is uh, – He's a really neat young man. He, he got his degree uh, this past May, so he's in grad school, and he's just, uh, in my mind, um, the, the the poster for what you want a student athlete to be, a uh, polite, respectful young man. He's got a bright future, wants to be a coach. Um, he was a part of a team as a freshman that won 20 games and finished second in the conference so he understands, I believe, what it takes to win in our league. And um, he was having a great year, you know, two years ago on that team with Bose that was actually picked to win the league. Before he, he got hurt, we kind of limped into the conference tournament that year without him. Uh, a lot of questions in my mind about how he would return and, and whether he would be a little bit off and, and, and maybe less athletic, less agile. Um Thankfully, none of those things has proven to be an issue. He's, uh, as far as I can tell, 100%. He's not playing with any pain, and you can't tell he's ever had an injury. He moves well. He plays without a brace. Um, he's still as athletic as he ever was. and uh, He's improved his skill, and he certainly, uh, because of the year sitting out, has learned a lot about the game from a, a coaching perspective. And... Um, that, that that insight or that IQ for the game combined with what he already has, I think is going to hopefully set him up to have a really good year this year within our league. And, uh, you know, I told uh, some of the guys close to my program here in town that support us that, you know, I don't want to put too much pressure or weight on Fred's shoulders, but I kind of feel like as he goes, we will go. Um, and we've got some good pieces around him. And if uh, he can find a consistent rhythm where he can get us buckets and rebounds every night and defend well, I think we'll be uh, we'll be a tough team to beat in the league. Talk a little bit about his supporting cast. Who, who do you think uh, could have a breakout year? You know, Dantrell showed signs. Dantrell Thomas showed signs last year down the stretch of of really being a, a good player in this league. And it's probably the reason we were able to sneak in the tournament. Uh, we were devastated with injuries last year and had a really young team. And I thought making the conference tournament was a huge accomplishment for that group and really wasn't sure we'd be able to do that in midway point of the season. But Dantrell is kind of the reason that happened. 
So I'm, I'm hoping that he continues to develop and grow. And when you pair him up with Fred and then um, the McBeath kid um, was inconsistent last year but showed flashes of, of being a solid player, I think those three um, really give us a chance to be good if, uh, if we can defend and rebound and score the ball. And then uh, Real Yeh last year at the point was solid. Uh, he's gotten better. He's gotten stronger. has a better understanding for what it takes at this level. And um, has had a good off season. And then um, no one in the league really got to see the big kid from Australia, Lachlan Press, because he tore a meniscus in the first game at San Antonio last year. But he's had a great Great off season, rehab the knee. He's healthy, feeling good, and, and really looks good for us. So, um, probably those five guys or, or the nucleus um, that I think you know make us competitive. And then we're working to develop um, that next group that's going to support them to give us a little bit of depth. JP, good morning. This is Len Rollins with the Southland Television Network. Hey, How are you? Good, to, good to hear from you, Len. Thank you. I, I, I just you, you mentioned the tournament, and, and, and I agree. I, I thought it was uh, a really significant accomplishment given what you had to overcome last year. But looking at the tournament overall, I mean, there have been some 20-win teams uh, during the regular season that, that you know, finished first or second. Um, but it means almost nothing in terms of seeding historically in this tournament, which which begs the question, I guess what I'm trying to get to is, if you make the Southland Conference tournament, it seems to me that, that everybody has a legitimate chance because of the competitive nature. And, and we've seen so many wonderful runs from so-called lower-seeded teams. Yeah, I, I would agree with that, Lynn. I think uh, without knowing Oral Roberts as well as I need to, because I just haven't studied them yet, but I mean, there's plenty of time for me to do that before we have to play them. Um, knowing the rest of the teams in the league, it, it's hard to say. Uh, that there's a clear-cut team that will will distance itself from the rest. I think coming into this, um, anybody could get on a little run and 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 make some noise. Uh, it seems like there's great parity, and that happens every couple of years in our league, where it it almost looks like the league takes a step back, maybe. But I don't really think it's taking a step back. I just think everybody's going to be similar in in terms of their ability to win games. Um, you know, I thought last year Arlington was a dominant team. I don't see that team unless it's Earl Roberts uh, this year in the league. And, um, you know, would, would like to believe that gives us all a chance. You just got to get to March healthy and um, having your team understand what it needs to do to win games and then and getting that out on the floor. But um, from my perspective, I'm really excited about the year. I think, uh, you know, it. If we can stay healthy, we have a good chance to, to get on a little run and make some noise. How many Australians do you have on this year's team? There are – that's a trick question for me, huh? Uh, there are four. Okay. We have uh, one kid that's going to redshirt, Pierce Carroll. That's why I, I had to count for a second. Um, so I, I, I don't think of him as being in our mix because he will redshirt. We know that up front. Um we have Lachlan Prest, who will compete for a starting spot. Sam McBeath, who will compete for a starting spot. And then Lyndon Smith-Hyde is a senior who ended up being a starter last year due to the accumulation of injuries, but will probably play a backup guard position for us this year. Um, but I think it's great that you know, you're know you talking about a guy that probably started six or seven games in conference last year who will um, – be relegated to a backup role. Uh, hopefully that means the guys that are ahead of him are, are pretty good players. And um, Lyndon being a senior, I think, uh, will be a good spark for us off the bench. Thank you. Good luck. Absolutely. Thank you. Anything else for J.P. Piper at Nickel State? All right, Coach. Uh, best of luck Saturday in your opener at Vanderbilt. And Thank you. We'll need it. You. All right. All right. Thank Bye. you. Uh, Doobie, are you with us? You may need to press star six to unmute your phone line. There was a chance that she was not going to be able to join us this morning based on a travel schedule uh, for their opener against DePaul on Friday. Uh, we'll give her just a couple minutes here.
Hello? Doobie, are you with us? Yes, this is she. All right. Hello. Hi. Wasn't wasn't sure if you're going to be able to join us. I know we had touched base earlier about your travel schedules, but um, I'm glad you're glad you're able to, to join us. Absolutely, absolutely. I'm just going to show up a little late for the airport, and I hope that a uh, plane doesn't leave me. My players <laughs> might be a little thrilled about that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll try to make it quick. Uh, you're okay. in your fifth fifth season at uh, Nickel State, 29 and 86, uh, tied for fourth in the East last year at seven and nine, uh, finished 15 and 16. Uh, overall uh, and coming off a uh, uh, appearance in the conference tournament. Uh, well, just provide us with a short opening statement, and then we'll open it up for questions. Well, as I'm sure all the uh, coaches feel, November cannot come quick enough after March. Uh, we uh, ended last season um, on uh, actually a bittersweet note. I was very proud of our players for having such uh, a historic season here at Nichols. However, um, you know, my players and myself, we just feel like we have some unfinished business, and so we're very excited to get started and thrilled about opening up against a top 25 team and uh, Doug Bruno and his uh, DePaul Demons. Uh, Doug Bruno is a class act. Um, he's a personal friend of mine, and I'm very honored to be on the same uh, uh, sideline as an Olympic gold medalist. So we're, we're very excited, very excited. Coach, you talked a little bit about, um, you know, making the tournament uh, record-setting 15 wins last year, seven in the conference, uh, uh, appearance in the semifinals of the tournament. How does that change uh, your mindset uh, heading into this year? This is going to sound probably off, but it, it doesn't. It's crazy, but um, with the inception of me stepping on campus at Nichols, my expectations were to make it to the conference tournament, win some playoff games, win the conference tournament, and go on to the NCAAs. And uh, all it does is make us a little bit more uh, anxious. Uh, the, the, the conference um, is just they're, they're so strong and uh, so much parity in a good way. Um, and I'm very excited, very proud to be a member of the Southland Conf Conference. Quality coaches, quality players across the board, and – uh, at the end of the uh, day or at the end of the season, it's, it's going to be uh, a very exciting turnout. And it, it, our mindset is just still the same. We have goals and ambitions, and we hope to achieve them this year. All right, we'll go ahead and open it up for questions uh, for Doobie Place on at Nickel State. Doobie, this is uh, Len Rollins with the Southland Television Network. Good morning. How are you? Hi, good morning, Len. I'm doing well. Thank you. Terrific. I, 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 I want to pay you a compliment. I, I thought I want to pay your team a compliment. I, I thought last year uh, Nichols played with as much cohesion and effort and heart w without maybe uh, superstars. Uh, and and I, I thought it was extremely effective. I guess what I'm trying to get to, what what is the tenor of your team right now? Um, how might Nichols this season be different or the same as last year? Great question and, and super insight. It's it's uh it, it's funny you should say that. Uh, in one of my earlier articles, in terms of the preseason interviews, my my focus is the, on the intangibles and the chemistry of this team. Um, I, I do feel like we're we'll, we're still undersized, but that hasn't intimidated myself or my players ever. I do believe the talent level in terms of depth, it, you're going to see a difference there. Last year we had a, a relatively short bench. But uh, if the good Lord says the same and our injuries, uh, you know, stay at bay, um, I'm excited about our depth. But it, it, you, you hit it spot on. It's about the intangibles and our chemistry. You know, if we can do all the intangibles, we can keep the chemistry there. We know how to feed off each other and read each other. I think that's going to determine the success of our season. Super insight. Thank you. Thank you. Other questions for Coach Playson? All right, Coach, I'll, I'll, I'll let you get to the airport so, so you can make that flight. Well, thank you very much, and uh, God bless everyone. Have a great day. Appreciate your time and wish you the best of luck. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Coach Yarbrough, are you with us? You may need to press star six to unmute your phone line. Jim, are you with us? All right, 
we'll give him just a minute to join us. may need to press star six again to unmute your phone line. Hello. Jim. Yes. Good morning. Uh, obviously, I was uh, challenged there technologically for a second, but... <laughs> I'm Sometimes it can be confusing when we've muted everybody, but well, uh, thanks, thanks for joining Well, pound six is not star six. I needed to look at that. <laughs> uh, wow. Okay. Um, you're, thanks for joining us. Uh, speaking to Jim Yarbrough, the head coach at South, head men's coach at Southeastern Louisiana, uh, through seven years, have a record of 108 and 99, uh, coming off a fifth place finish in the East, 12 and 17 overall, and five and 11 in the conference. Uh, coach, why don't you? Bring us up to date on how practice has been going, and uh, as you as you're preparing for your uh, opener on Sunday at Wisconsin. Well, I, I think it's been good. I, I've, I've enjoyed getting back and, um, and listening to a couple of the coaches talk. It's it's an exciting off season, and, and glad to have the season back again. Um, you know, I thought it was really important for us to have a a great summer. New NCA legislation allowed us to do some work and, and a great fall. And uh, I think we've accomplished that. A great training cycle in the fall when we got back and, and some, a good few weeks of practice, a great close scrimmage I thought was very competitive and good for us. And, uh, of course, trying to answer some questions about our team, uh, Brandon Fortenberry coming back, uh, Roosevelt Johnson's consistency coming in, players that got to play a lot last year, would they come through and continue to develop newcomers and how they fit in? Uh, but you know, I, I, I think we're about as good a place as we can be in at this point. Hopefully we'll just continue to get better and the cohesion and chemistry will be good. But um, I, I'm very pleased, and, and I know our players are probably excited to have an exhibition game tonight. Uh, the emphasis after 20 or so practices changes uh, from the grind. Uh, you know, this is, uh, I guess, our version of a, of a, a boot camp or, a, you know, preseason training, even though it's, it's not while we're in school. But, a lot of uh, longer days and grinding and on each other, a lot of reps, and now we start to, to get into the part where we plan for games and, and put some strategies and try to execute some things. And uh, I know everybody's excited about what's, what's ahead of us now. All right, we'll go ahead and open it up for questions for Jim Yarbrough, the men's coach at Southeastern Louisiana. Again, media, you may need to press star six to unmute your phone line, uh, and we do ask that you identify yourself by name and media organization prior to asking a question. Coach, I know you're really thrilled to have uh, Brandon Fortenberry back. Uh, losing him last year uh, when you did was, was really hard. Uh, but talk, talk about his return and what he means to your team. Well, it was very difficult. He uh, affected so many layers of the game defensively, decision-making, uh, offensive ability. I think when he went down, he was averaging about 17 or so points per game. And, um, you know, when you get to that place, we just realized how young, uh, and inexperienced and new to each other we were. We had a lot of pieces, but not a lot of experience. We had three core guys a year ago, Brandon, Deshaun, and, and really Roosevelt Johnson, who was a junior at that time. And, and that was a huge piece to miss. It was, became an opportunity for a lot of guys to get minutes, get experiences they wouldn't have gotten otherwise. And so I was, as I alluded to earlier, I thought it was really important that the season ended to find out just how hungry we could be, how hard we could push and, and how much we wanted to, to turn our fortunes around. Uh, certainly, Brandon first healing up right uh, correctly, which was a huge part of our decision to redshirt him, was big. And it seems as if he's in a good place and I hope we can keep him there. I saw Roosevelt Johnson uh, in the last seven games of the year become extremely consistent, averaging of about 16 and 11, I guess it was, something to that effect. He was really, really effective. I think he was player of the week. Uh, sports writers uh, voted him player of the week and the league voted him player of the week, or at least honorable mention toward the end of the year, right in the last week or so. So he was on an uptick. Todd Nelson came on for us uh, in the last five games of the year. And, uh, and then it was important for us with Brandon's injury and kind of exposing maybe a lack of depth, which, is, which can be a, a real killer. We, I thought we did a great job in recruiting. I thought we brought in great guard depth, a little more size, and so I think we have a lot of parts to this year's team uh, that we, we didn't have a year ago. We, we kind of had what we had, 
but if we didn't, you know, we didn't have a great shooting, we didn't have some things that just were fundamental to to hopefully being successful. We played in a ton of close games, uh, and they they seemed to slip away from us. Um, that was really frustrating. Uh, I think this year, at least, I'm hopeful that we have the depth and the moxie and the experience and and the drive to to win some of those close games. And um, you know, of course. The big thing for us now, having all those parts in place, can the new guys, how quickly, you know, the you know, five really newcomers, two high school players, three junior college players, can they adapt and overcome? There's always a learning curve, and we're trying to force them through that as quickly as possible. But at least we have, you know, five or six guys who have started a bunch of games. They've scored double-digit points in a game. They've contributed in, a, in games. They kind of know what it's about now. Uh, unfortunately, uh, or fortunately, as the case may be, our, in our first 11 games, we have a real uh, tremendous non-conference schedule. It starts this coming week at Wisconsin, followed by Marquette, and a cross-country flight to New Mexico State. And, um, you know, it's not the first three games of the year I'm worried about. It's the first three games of conference play and the last three games, hopefully, of the season, including our tournament. So we'll be tested, and we'll have to battle our way to gain confidence and, and get better and find that chemistry. Uh, we won't have the luxury, perhaps, of having an easy schedule uh, or, or to, you know, to kind of find a confidence and a rhythm. We're going to have to do it against some of the best in the country, literally. And uh, hopefully we can find that, and uh, I can help guide these guys to that. That's going to be a, a, you know, a role for me to make sure we keep our eyes on the right things, big-picture thinking as we get into January, February, and March. Yeah, you mentioned that tough schedule. I, I, I saw a note that you have eight teams that played in either the NCAA a tournament or the NIT. So, well, I got to fire that guy who does the scheduling. He, <laughs> uh, I don't know about him, but uh, you know, it's great to play those schedules. But uh, who would ever thought that our easy games were on the road at Louisiana Tech or at home against Southeast Missouri or you know on the road at ULM? Those are our easy games, uh, you know, with with the exception of one or two. And so, you know, but if this team's going to accomplish something, it it and I think it can. You know, I, I look at what we've got coming back and Brandon Fortenberry and some of the players we have coming back. I I like this group. Um, you know, it, it, you can't predict anything, though. Uh, as been alluded to in call after call, I'm sure there is great parity, and, and somebody will finish toward the bottom that you'd scratch your head and say, I can't believe that. Someone may finish toward the top, scratch your head and say, you can't believe that. But, um, you know, but we, we think we, we belong in there with just about anybody, but we have to go out and prove it, and we have to, you know, really keep that drive all year long. And, um it is a killer schedule. You know, we're not starting with great pole position and uh, going to kind of flow through this into January unscathed and unscarred. We're going to take some body shots, but I just hope that when we go someplace and we're on the road, we can play our game and uh, give a few of those body shots back. And if we if we, we accomplish that, I think the process is working just like it's supposed to as we get into league play in January. Jim, re- real quick, uh, this is Len Rollins with hey, Len. Television Network. How are you? Good. Um, and you've already eloquently addressed most of this, and I was going to, to, to allude to the, the incredible number of close games and, and late-game opportunities that you guys had and sometimes came up short, uh, and I do understand about the injuries. Is there a player or two that you feel like can be more effective in that critical bucket situation, maybe having to create, maybe coming off the screen and, and scoring with a design play, whatever that – would, would, would give you a little bit of a better offensive opportunity uh, when that game is on the line in the final seconds? Well, I think there's two parts to that. Um, the first part is, um, and I think your question's spot on, but I, I, the first part is doing little things throughout the game, the, those fundamental things that keep you uh, insulated and protected from those late-game situations. The last year we were at times just awful at the free-throw line. And that just was a reflection of who we are, who we are shooting the basketball. I thought we misfired on easy opportunities, or at times we had the right defensive mindset, but somebody had a breakdown and didn't rotate or something. And all of a sudden, you are still in that fight for your life. You never get any separation. Hopefully, if your team is doing some things throughout the game and uh, rewarding itself, getting to the foul line, and then making those free throws. And things like that, maybe you have a little bit of a working margin and you control the game a little bit differently. But if you do find yourself at the end of the game 
I certainly think the return of Brandon Fortenberry gives you someone who can jump up and make a shot and make a play, maybe get him in space and let him do some things. But, you know, I hope that recruiting the guards that we have, I, I, I certainly think that Dre Evans, who's a transfer from Blinn Community College, and Jeff Ricard, who's a Louisiana native who comes from McLennan, both of them have a little bit of that ability, I think, to, to lean in there. There's a real competitiveness. I really, you know, sometimes you kind of hit or miss, but I love what the junior college players have brought to our program this year. All three of them have been culture changers, if you will. I think they've got a real drive. I think they love basketball. I think they've kind of reinvigorated what was already coming back and I think was already pretty hungry. And I hope we can keep that. So I hope I have a little bit more from the perimeter spot to make a play and hopefully guys like Roosevelt, maybe one or two others who can jump up and and tip in a miss or make, you know, get a garbage basket late. But I think we're a little better there and I hope we'll capitalize earlier in the game uh, be a little smarter, a little bit more fundamental, a little bit more sound, do the little things to stay out of some of those dangerous, and, and, you know, the game could go either way kind of situations. Well, thank you, and travel safely. Thank you. All right, Coach, appreciate your time today. Thanks for joining us, and wish you the best of luck this year. Appreciate you all. Lori, are you with us? Hello, this is Lori. Hi, Lori. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you. Uh, Joined now by Lori Davis-Jones, the women's head coach at Southeastern Louisiana. Uh, she, she is in her 11th year, uh, 126 and 160 uh, record, uh, finished uh, tied for fourth in the East last year at 7-9 and nine, and 12-8 uh, and eight, uh, uh, overall. Uh, that looks like uh, four consecutive appearances in the conference tournament. Coach, talk a little bit about your um, – your preseason practice and as you're heading toward that date Friday uh, at Mississippi? Well, when we were in October, I was really enjoying practicing because we didn't play till November. And then now that all of a sudden you look up and it's November, you're like, oh, my goodness. Um, and, and with five freshmen on the court and one junior college kid who are all new to the system, um, these young ladies are – have a lot of energy, but um, we are definitely behind a learning curve right now. All right, we'll go ahead and open it up for questions uh, for Lori Davis Jones at Southeastern Louisiana. Lori, uh, th this is Lynn Rollins with the Southland Television Network. How, how are you doing? Hey, Lynn, I'm good. How are you? I'm, I'm fine, thank you. I I'm a little. I understand, you know, what you're talking about at the outset. What what are the things that these new players, n number one, what strengths do they bring, even pea green as they are? And, <laughs> and on the other side of that, what what is it that, that, that they must grasp in a hurry to get into the flow of things and be effective? Well, since we only return um, 32 points and two starters to um, – to the court this year, they're all going to have to grasp everything really quickly. Um, we, we've recruited some shooters, we've recruited some scorers, and we've recruited some size, and um, they're all going to play. They are all going to play Friday, probably, when we go to Ole Miss, and um, it's just going to be a, a matter of, of figuring it out while we're hot in the middle of things. The, the biggest thing that they bring, Lynn, though, that I've really, truly enjoyed is um, that energy, that freshman energy, that freshman fun, that, that firepower, that competitiveness. Our practices have truly been enjoyable, um, even when they've been um, relatively not smart practices maybe. You know, we work too hard, don't work smart enough sometimes. It's just so easy to overcome um, our mistakes because they've just have been very coachable and responsible for uh, being committed to understanding they're going to have to play right away. So uh, it, it's been a lot of fun. We, we, we brought in some more speed. We brought in some shooting. Uh, and, and I'm looking forward to watching it all um, hit. We all gel together. It's, it's a really neat group. I heard Doobie talk about earlier, you alluded to um, their – uh, their their symbiotic flow on the court, how everybody was all together and no superstar, and that's really kind of where we're the kind of team that we're going to be this year. 
Um, we lose Kelly Jenkins as our point guard, who's run the show for us for the last four years. And we bring in Liz, Liz Stiles, who's completely dynamic and um, ha- has done a really good job as a sophomore stepping onto the court of uh, grasping this team and, and taking hold and being a super leader for us, as well as super speedy, quick, and, and can get in the paint, score, and distribute. So she's a, a multiple um, scoring option, whether it's distributing points by passes or hitting little jumpers that she's got. And uh, just bringing in Jamika Hoskins, a junior college transfer from um, North Mississippi, she has we've done some early game early season late game practice situations already where uh, the teams have been down her team has been down by three and she hit the game winner with two seconds so we've already watched them grow we've done way more late game and game situations in practice at this point than we've ever done um, just putting them in those situations so it's been a lot of fun Lynn um, and they're very and right now we are all enjoying what's going on. Um, it is going to be a fire uh, initiation by fire, though, when we go. We've got two non-conference SEC opponents in Ole Miss and Alabama, and then you know, we, we go to Baylor for the defending national championship to play the defending national champion down there in Waco later on in the season. So um, feeling like we should get some really good opportunities to see what's going to happen in conference. Thank, thank you for that. I, I don't think I was able to work in the word symbiotic, but I appreciate you, uh, you know, <laughs> attributing that to me. That, that That's nice of you. <laughs> You're welcome, Lynn. Other questions for Lori Davis-Jones at Southeastern. Coach, this is Lincoln Rose also with the network. How are you doing? Hey, Lincoln. I'm good. Thanks. Uh, around my neck of the woods, we used to have a D-League coach named Brad who has headed off to Salt Lake City. I imagine about the same time of year that you get excited for basketball season that's mixed emotions as uh, Brad heads out. But uh, during the year, uh, phone conversations, is there any of that that's X's and O's, or is it just completely catching up on family? Um, there's a lot of all of that, Lincoln. And, yes, um, we, we've learned a lot. I've learned a lot from him over the years with his relationships with um, the Jazz and the Spurs in the last five years. and um, We actually run some of the Spurs stuff uh, that we stole from. I wish we ran it like Tony Parker and <laughs> did, but we actually run some of their stuff. Uh, we like we like their action and their early offense, and, and uh, Brad came back and, and did some showed, showed us some stuff with that. Um, just really excited for my husband. Um, he's, we've worked, we've lived this life for five years to, for him to be in this position. So, uh, it's, it's kind of, sorry, I, I truly didn't expect that y'all. Sorry about that, but it is kind of, um, exciting, bittersweet, um, but just fun for our family and, um, his kids miss him and, but it'll be good. It'll be good. So. Thanks, Lincoln. I appreciate you bringing the emotional side of me out in this. <laughs> well, well, I promise uh, I'll do my best not to bring you to tears when we see you in person on ESPN3. <laughs> Thank you. Now, I, I did not expect that to happen, and um, but, yeah, we're, we as a family have, have traveled down this road for a while, and um, this is the next step for him, and um, it, it's truly exciting for him to be professionally, to win the whole thing in the D-League last year. Um, to be the Pan American Trial Court coach last year, to um, to to be the NBA All- D League All Star coach last year, and and this is the next thing. So um, he's definitely the better coach in the family, that's for sure. And there's plenty to learn from him. Well, we expect to see that many more bank shots from about 15 feet out if y'all are running the first <laughs> offense. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you're talking about, and thank you. Other questions for Lori today. I am so sorry, y'all. I did not know. I, I apologize for that. No, it's, un- it's understandable. Well, Coach, thank you for your time, and I wish you the best of luck uh, this season, and especially on Friday, don't miss. Thank y'all. Coach McConathy, are you with us? Yes, sir. All right, joined now by Mike McConathy, the head coach at Northwestern State. He's been there for 13 seasons, uh, now in his 14th year, a 200 and 204 record. 
uh, has uh, more than 400, or excuse me, 550 career wins uh, and a career uh, that is now in its 30th season. Last year, the Demons 16 and 16 overall, and eight and eight in the conference, uh, making their second consecutive uh, Southland Conference uh, tournament appearance. Coach, how's practice going? Oh, it's gone fine. You know, it's it's uh, got new faces, and that's exciting. But uh, everything's working along just fine. Uh, I've had oh, absolutely. Feel like that we've made some progress. All right, Hello. we'll go ahead and okay. We'll go ahead and open it up for questions for Mike McConathy at Northwestern State. Hey, Coach, this is Jimmy Trammell from the newspaper in Tulsa. I, I've seen something on on you guys' website that you think your backcourt could be comparable to. Uh, 2006, I mean, and that's, uh, you know, of course, the year you beat uh, Iowa and you beat Oklahoma State uh, in Stillwater. I, I would think if you think your backcourt is comparable to 06, uh, that's saying something. Well, Shamir Davis is coming back, first-team preseason all-league uh, pick, and then we have uh, a junior college transfer in Bryson White from Neosha, and then we also have a freshman named Jalen West from Bozier High School that, that redshirted last year that uh, – it's a very, very special player. Uh, it's really hard to describe him. He's, he's, he's just very talented. He, he makes everybody else on the floor better. And, and with Shamir and Bryson at times being on the floor with them together, I think that we'll have three guys that uh, can get to the goal or can make perimeter uh, jump shots, and that should uh, help our interior play a great bit. Yeah, Jalen's numbers in British Columbia were pretty impressive now. Yeah, he was he was pretty special. I mean, it, it was just uh, and he just played the game just comes to him with ease and he's not a big guy, but he plays a lot bigger than he is. But he one of the things that I've noticed about him that uh is very impressive is he's a smaller guy, but he never seems to try to over jump or get himself in a position uh that he can't control the play that he's he's making at that time. So he makes the play, gets the ball to people, and he knocks shots down, and he makes free throws when he steps up to the line. I appreciate it. Thank you. Other questions for Mike McConaughey at Northwestern State. Hey, Mike. Uh, Len Rollins with the Southland Television Network. How you doing? Coach McConaughey, uh, Jimmy Walker, NSU Current South. Okay. Now, Len, Len, go ahead. No, go, go ahead. I'll defer, sure. Okay. Coach, uh, Will Mosley, he will no longer be with the program as he's uh, graduated and moved on to playing basketball overseas. Uh, talk about how the Demons will try to compensate with the loss of a great shot blocker in Will Mosley. I've only coached really two great shot blockers in my life, and uh, Will was was the best of the two, but uh, tough. I mean, but on the other hand, I think, too, that perimeter-wise, defensively, we'll be a lot stronger because those guys don't have Will behind them anymore. So they know they have to do a better job of staying in front of their defender. So sometimes that was a negative. But Will competed hard every game. He played hard. He just had an un unbelievable knack for staying on the floor and waiting until the offensive player left the, their feet before he would go after the block. So it's going to be difficult, but uh, we'll have to find a way because – you can't keep playing with the same guys every year, but uh, he was a special kid to have in our program, and, and we're excited he's doing so well overseas in Italy. Hey, Mike, uh, I, I wanted to you, – you talked about some of the new names, and I can hear the excitement in your voice and, and, and the potential there. You've also got a, some new folks on the bench. Um, and, and, and you like to substitute frequently and, and, and apply pressure on both ends with, with, with new waves of, of, uh, of substitutes. How how have the guys accepted that, and and does that take any getting used to? Uh, if you're a new new player who's come in with pretty good credentials, and maybe you're playing you know 30 35 minutes most nights, and and now you're playing 20 or 22, but at a higher speed. I think it takes. Scott, late Scotty Robertson said, "I don't agree with you, but you're one heck of a salesman at getting them to believe in that." And I think that you have to just coach that from the beginning, from recruitment until they get here, explaining that we're going to play at a high speed. You're going to we're going to spread the minutes around. One night somebody's going to be hot. The next night somebody else is going to be there. So it's a total team uh, concept, and you really have to preach unselfishness. And that is a daily task to make sure that you stay on on that uh, topic of trying to get guys to buy into the product that you're trying to put on the floor that you're going to compete as hard as you possibly can. 
How do, how do you like your team defensively right now? Uh, you know, we, we, we're a little bit better uh, this week than last. <laughs> But uh, in our two scrimmages, we, we played one. and one scrimmage, we were pretty good defensively. In the other team, we were not. Other scrimmage, we didn't do as well. Uh, I just think that we've got to get to where we get to the midline and we're in help much better and trying to really work on being up in uh, the passing lanes, denying, trying to force people off the positions that they're comfortable with to run their offense. And that just takes time to do that. And, uh, but I like our length and I do like our quickness. And I think that because we're long, that, that can be an advantage for us in some matchups. Mike, thanks. We'll see you pretty early in the season on um, uh, against Nichols on, on, on television. So we're looking forward to that. Thank you, Lynn. Other questions for Coach McConaughey? Hey, Coach, before we let you go, I, um, I know it's the 100th season of Northwestern State basketball. It's the 50th season of Southland Conference basketball. I want you to just talk a little bit about that, if you would, being an outstanding player at Louisiana Tech in the 70s and now one of the league's uh, top coaches. Talk, talk about Southland basketball through the years. Well, I mean, Southland basketball, I think the one thing that you can say about it is it's, it's remained consistent. It's remained consistent with very talented players. It's remained consistent with very good coaches. You know, go back many, many years to the players that came through the, the league and uh, the Edmund Lawrences, the Andrew Tonys, the Carl Malones, the, those kind of names, uh, uh, just phenomenal players that have come through this league. And today the coaches that we have in this league that continually are always there. I mean, Danny Casper just does a fantastic job. And, I mean, you know, all the other guys, I'm not I'm – not, singling Danny out, but he's, he's been there every year, year in and out. And we've had guys that have come through. I mean, Jim Yarborough, excellent coach. All the guys, Scott Sutton coming in, Dave Simmons from my staff, uh, has done, been right there at the top the last two years, uh, won, the, won it two years ago there, and just done a great job. So I think the consistency of player, the consistency of coaches has allowed our league to be a league um, that is um, – you know, I think that people look at this league and underestimate – one players and coaches in it, and I think when you do come into this league, you realize the the type of coaches you you have. Of course, Coach Pat Knight bringing taking Lamar to the tournament last year and winning it. So I mean, it's just phenomenal uh, on both sides of, of, of the ball. I guess they're coaching and basketball playing. So just look forward to being able to in our centennial year. When you think about for that, we've got about. We're looking at it from a pre-Division One and a po uh, pre-Division One, and then a Division One period, in which we've had some very good, successful times during the NAI period, uh, back in the uh, 40s and 50s and 60s, and then in the Division One level, we've had some success and and nice players as well uh, during those different eras of play. And I think it's special because uh, maybe a little more special for me because I'm here because my history with this program goes back to my father and, the, and, the, and bro, his brothers who played here in the 40s and then he played in the late 40s and 50s and one more of the brothers in the 50s to be able to see the program span all the way across you know about seven, 60 to 70 years makes a, a tremendous difference and maybe I have a little bit better uh, opinion of the importance of, of celebrating something that's 100 years old. And sometimes I don't think we stop and, and reflect on those kind, of two, those kind of things because we think right now is all it's about, and we have to recognize those piece, people from the past. All right, Coach, appreciate your time and wish you the best of luck this season and on Friday against East Texas Baptist. Thank you. Thank you. Brooke, are you with us? I'm here. All right, joined now by – uh, Brooke Store, the co-head coach at Northwestern State on the women's side, um, coming into her first season uh, with the program, a, a team that inheriting a team that finished six and 23 uh, overall last year and two and 14 for a sixth place finish in the East Division. Uh, coach, bring us up to speed on on the transition and this team that you've inherited. Well, it's been uh, quite a transition. Um, we obviously uh, weren't expecting to move. I was 35 weeks pregnant when we moved, and so we had a baby and uh, just hit the ground running, and we haven't stopped since. So I think it's uh, it's required a lot of energy, but uh, we've got a great young staff, and 
um, they've really worked extremely hard for us, and uh, we're just trying to establish a culture of, of winning here. All right, we'll go ahead and open it up for questions now for Brooks Store at Northwestern State. Coach, maybe talk a little bit about uh, changing, having to change the culture uh, here in the, in the first year. Well, I think so much of it is just based on waking up every day and bringing your best energy and your best effort. Um, so many times, you know, you can get away from the X's and O's and that standpoint. So much of what we're doing is just trying to wake up every day and challenge, challenge these young ladies to be the best they can be in the classroom, on, on the court, in the community. And sometimes, you know, people have differing um, opinions on, on how to do things, and we're trying to implement a certain system here as far as that goes and just a certain level of daily disciplines and accountability uh, with, the, with our team. And, um, you know, I think so many times um, change is very difficult for, for young people especially, uh, but they've been very receptive to our, our teaching and uh, what we've asked them to do on and off the court. And uh, we've been very encouraged by that and very pleased by that. Coach, hi, this is Lynn Rollins with the Southland Television Network. How are you? Hi, Lynn, doing well. Uh, welcome to Natchitoches, too. Thank you. It's been, um, it's... I, 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 I'm very familiar with the, the history at a very high level for a long time of Northwestern uh, Lady Demon basketball, and, and then, of course, recent years have, have, uh, have, have not been at that level. You, you talk about changes and, and some of the things you're, you're, you're trying to do uh, can you capsulize that for me? Uh, what style of basketball that 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 you would prefer, and and the biggest challenges so far, and um, the things that that you guys feel like are are there and and reachable uh, in 2012 and 2013? Well, I think when you look at any coach, when they look at what their philosophy is, our starts with our our core values, and and those are. Um, work ethic, accountability, competitive greatness. Um, and it's just something that we're really building our foundation on. And, and those little things every single day um, affect our, our play on the court. They affect how we do in the classroom and how we represent the program and the community. This program has been very, very successful in the past. Coach Pearson and Coach Smith obviously had great runs uh, to the NCAA tournament. And it, it is a place that has history, and that was one of the main – attractions to the job for for Scott and myself was you know it's a place that has seen success um, obviously with coach Mike and what he's done with his program we felt like you know that was certainly something that was attainable for us um, here in the near future um, it's just a matter of, of having these young ladies believe in themselves and buy in you know without using so much coach speak it, it's true it's just getting up every single day and requiring the best from each other and you know for whatever reason um, that's that's been a change for them, and it's just something that we're trying to implement, um, you know, how, how we sprint from drill to drill, how we approach our practices, how we approach a scouting report, how we travel, you know, just all those little things. They're, they're all basically freshmen, and so they're learning um, how we expect them to do things uh, on a daily basis. And uh, so I think, you know, some of the challenge that, challenges that have come with that, um, you know, we're still dealing with the effects of some of the injuries they had last year. We have several kids that are out and um, have had surgeries and, and some that won't come back. Um, we're dealing with, you know, some academic issues from a couple of them. And those are the things that we're, we're trying to get in place and, and get these young ladies to understand that they're part of something bigger than themselves. Um, they're a part of a, a great tradition, um, and how do they want to leave their mark on the program, and, and how do they want to start that um, this year in 2012? How do you and your husband uh, divide coaching responsibilities? Um, we basically we plan a lot of it together. Um, he handles a lot of the offensive side of the ball right now. Um, I'll focus a lot of, of my efforts on the defense. Um, we we ended individually we have different strengths um, as far as that goes I handle a lot of the um, the PR and and we both handle a majority of the recruiting so it um, I think it's pretty similar to any other staff as far as how you split things up um, I think he likes to to make me feel like you know if, if we have a, a, a bad loss it's, it's probably on my shoulder so um, you know I'm just teasing it's it's actually been really good it's someone you you trust and you have the utmost respect for and someone that understands the high highs and the low lows, and so it's, it's been a good balance uh, for us. 
Well, th- thank you. I appreciate it, and good luck. Thank you. Yeah, Coach, appreciate your time. Looking forward to, to seeing your first team uh, here with Northwestern State and wish you the best of luck Friday at New Orleans. Thank you. We appreciate it. Thank you. Dave, are you with us? Dave Simmons from McNeese. May need to press star six to unmute your phone line. Oh, you hear me? I'm here. I do. Yep. All okay. right. Okay. Right. Joined now by Dave Simmons at McNeese State. Uh, he is in his seventh season, 87 and 99. Uh, they're in Lake Charles, coming off uh, a 17 and 16 season overall, uh, 10 and 6 uh, in the Southland. Uh, finished second in the East Division, uh, coming off of uh, two better uh, back-to-back uh, appearances in the uh, championship final of the Southland tournament, uh, and, and and also the second straight uh, postseason uh, appearance. Uh, Coach, talk a little bit about what you have uh, coming back with this, with you this uh, season. Uh, well, uh, first of all, I got two two seniors, and the rest of us are all young and new. So it, it's been quite an experience since the opening day of practice. Uh, but uh, the kids are working hard, and it's going to be a process for us uh, as far as getting to where we want to be or competitive uh, as we were last year in the league. But uh, but the, you know the most support uh, you know Dante Cannon and uh, Jeremy Mitchell, which has uh, started for us last year, our leaders. So uh, we got to be patient on our end and uh, try to get them to a point where they understand what it's going to take to win. And uh, the last two years, the team have left a great foundation for us, and uh, we just got to continue to build on that. But we're excited about our season, excited about the new guys that we have in our in our program. Uh, I think the talent is young, but it's 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 very got a great upside for us. So we're just going to continue to work hard and and see where we, it puts us. But uh, the one thing our schedule is not very friendly to us. It's probably one of the toughest schedules we played by far uh, since I've been here at Magnese. All right, we'll go ahead and open it up for questions now for Dave Simmons, the head men's coach at McNeese State. Coach. Maybe just address the uh, de- you know departure of All American uh, Patrick Richard and, and you know how do you try to fill that void that he's left? Well, the thing about it, uh, when a kid like Pat, who's been so uh, instrumental in your program, is as far as uh, leadership on and off the court, is it's hard to replace him. And I know in coaching, the, you coaches that are out there, when you get a special kid in your program, and it's been the heart of your soul for the last three years. Uh, it's it's hard, and uh, you know you keep looking for him to return and walk through those doors or walk on their practice floor, but we move on. But uh, I think these guys have learned something from Pat. I think he le- left a great legacy, not not just as a basketball player, but within character of what he does. He's a hardworking young man who I believe that really got the most of out, of his, out of his talent. I mean, when you say coaches, maximize your ability, I think this young man did that by his work ethic. Uh, you know, it's what he put into the game, and he really got, you know, hopefully he's not, he's still pursuing his professional clear career. He just got drafted in the NBDL uh, Friday, but hopefully, you know, he has not finished anything and accomplished any of his goals. But I think his, his, he's got a tremendous future. And uh, what we've been blessed with the last few years, hopefully someone in, in the professional ranks will recognize it and uh, give him that opportunity. But it's going to be hard. But uh, we, uh, I've said this about this team right now. We're in the process of trying to find out our identity as a team. Uh, what are we good at? Uh, you know, those type of things. What are our strengths and weaknesses? And uh, we've been identi- able to identify uh, some of our start lineup, but we do not have a true lineup. Uh, I think it's going to be a committee based on until someone steps forward as far as a player who established himself as a uh and the other terms, old term I would used to use from my old coach is Bell Kyle. We don't have that one guy that's going we going we going to follow and lead right now. But uh, you know, hopefully by the time we get to conference, we'll develop that, that character, whether it's a committee or is just one person steps up. Coach, this is Lincoln Rose with the Conference Network. How are you doing? How are you doing, Lincoln? Let me ask you a couple questions. Uh, first off, in terms of returning players, anybody impress you when you saw them for the first time since uh, they left for the summer in terms of uh, just work that they put in on their own time? Well, like I said, uh, Dante Cannon is playing. I think he's playing at another level than last year. He was uh, 
picked uh, on all tournament team in the conference tournament. He was preseason, I think, second team uh, selection. I think he's really established himself as a player. And uh, I, I think that he's one kid that's worked hard. Uh, Jeremy Mitchell, on my two seniors, have really put in the time this summer. Uh, but, again, we had two freshmen last year. Uh, as we got into the conference tournament, when we had our injuries, uh, Kevin Hardy uh, was a freshman last year, has really stepped up. And uh, Deshaun Gidry, two local kids, have really uh, taken their game to another level. We have uh, we have good players, I, I would believe, and a good chemistry. But the biggest thing is, I'm going to say this, we're just so young. And until we get some games on our belt, uh, some good experience, and uh, like I said, I think that's when we're going to try to – we're going to mature as a basketball team. But it's a day, that, day by day. There's no one on our schedule that probably can't beat us, but there's no one on our schedule that I think we won't be competitive against. But uh, it's just going to take time for this team to mature. And just like the teams in the past, uh, we've been late, uh, I guess, late bloomers at times. But those are the two main guys. With a, and I've got some good young kids in the program, but – but before I, I, uh, I give them all, a, they've got to continue to work hard and get, get to that point where we feel like uh, we can be a, a team that can compete in the Southwest Conference. And by far, you look at the teams in it and the coaches in the league, is that it's, uh, it's just got tougher within the schedule travel and the teams that are coming in the league. And, of course, uh, I've had a uh, mention, uh, Mike McConaughey was listening to him, uh, it's a tough league, and anybody can beat anybody in this league. And it's proven in the past it can. So we just got to improve as a team, be competitive every night in, and when we walk off the court, knowing that we've gave, given our best and let the numbers on the clock take care of itself. There's certainly positives and negatives to not having that bell cow early on, but with the young team, does it at least give uh, individuals a chance not to assume someone else is going to take over the game and that they can, in fact, step up and uh, play an early role? Uh, no question. Uh, I think that with, uh, everybody will get the opportunity. If anything, is, it's an open season. Everybody will get the opportunity to prove themselves. Uh, but I told our kids uh, the biggest thing uh, uh, I said is uh, that the person's it's not about who starts our game. It's, it's minutes played and productivity. And they've got the, uh, everybody can get a piece of that pie, and it's proven that in the last two years. But we all got to buy into what we're, what we're doing as a team and believe in what we're doing as a coaching staff and, uh, and players. I think that's been the key success. And, uh, and these kids are working hard. I can't ask for anything else besides the, the effort they're giving me every day. And uh, when we leave the court, you know, I'm satisfied. And but with young kids, one day you, uh, as a coach, you say, "Well, we get they've got it," and the next day they can come back and tell and prove your your theory wrong. But it's just a process. And my thing and coaching staff, we just got to be patient until they improve to the point level and understand what the purpose. Now they can run every set we have, they can do everything we ask them to do, but. They've got to figure out what's the purpose of running this play. What's the purpose? What are we looking at? And once that that, that piece get, that of that puzzle gets together, I think uh, you know we'll be a very very good team, especially when conference come play come. And finally, the conference uh, goes league wide to these double headers during conference play. I, I believe you and the former East Division teams have had a little more experience recently with the double headers. It, have you seen in the past that a successful women's program can help carry momentum into that night game for the men and help let them feed off that momentum as well? Oh, no, true. I've been, I've been very fortunate to be been at some places where uh, I was in the league when I was at Northwestern State with Mike. Uh, we played doubleheaders, then we changed the mirror image, and then we would continue that. But uh, I think uh, we've got a great women's basketball team. Uh, they uh, picked uh, preseason by coaches and the uh, – in the media to uh, win the league. I, I think uh, she's got tremendous players, and they're young at certain spots, but I think she's got great leadership. So our fans are excited about it and on that end, standpoint because they can they can see both teams play at one time. And before, you know, uh, uh, when you're going, when you're Miriam, and she got to go this night and that night, but they uh, different nights, but they, they are pleased about it. I think our – 
especially our older older fans, and they can come out one night and see both teams. So we get good support, and uh, our women obviously is a good basketball team, and I think our, uh, both team numbers will improve because I think, uh, you know, just like uh, hit Jewel, both teams, and I think what we said and uh, and what we've done, accomplished the last two years with them playing in the NCAA last two years. So we're going to benefit by having a good women's team. So we just got to match that intensity and put a product on the floor that our fans will appreciate and embrace, uh, continue to embrace. Let me say that, continue to embrace that. But that's it's been great. And like I said, the last few years, we end up playing in the IIT and the CIT last year, which has been great experience for this basketball team and for our community so I'm, I'm very blessed to have a good women's team and like you say when they go out there and win that means our guys got to step up because you want to go out there and, and, and come off the court uh, both fans leaving them with a good taste that uh, hey, both teams play well I'm going to come back the next game so obviously that's, that's going to be a benefit to us I believe. We look forward to seeing you all this year. Okay thank you all right, and let me say you. this to Lynn Rollins I don't know if he's still there I think he's still on the call. Oh, yeah. Lynn. Uh, I just like to say to Lynn, uh, Lynn makes the Lake Charles paper. He's night fishing down here on a dock and everything and catching these big red fish. So I'll say congratulations to Lynn. Uh, we finally got him in Lake Charles area before he can uh, uh, appreciate the, the culture down here. <laughs> All right. I, I'll make sure that he heard that if he didn't. But um, Coach, appreciate your time today. Wish you the best of luck this season. And, uh, especially Friday for your opener against Louisiana College. All right, thank you. Thank you. Bye. Brooks, are you with us? I sure am. All right, thanks for taking the time this morning. Uh, joined now by Brooks Donald Williams, the women's head coach at McNeese State. Uh, she is 83 and 74 uh, in her sixth year. Uh, the team finished 26 and 8 last year, 13 and 3. Uh, second, which was second in the East Division, uh, coming off of back-to-back uh, Southland Conference Tournament uh, Championship, so NCAA uh, appearances as well. Coach, how's your team looking? Well, you know, we are, we're extremely excited about this 2012-13 season. You know, it's, it's a different look than last year. You know, I have seven returners, two that really, only two really played significant minutes last season, you know, the bag of twins and so it's just a different team. We got a lot of youth on the floor, and I think practice has been really good. You know, we we've really, you know, early on and honestly, all year long, we work on defense a lot and a lot of fundamental stuff, and and uh, it's it's just been a lot of teaching and uh, a lot of fun. But we're looking forward to the season and know that it's a very different year, and just want to take each day as it comes. All right, we'll go ahead and open it up for questions now for Brooks Donald Williams, the women's coach at McNeese State. Coach, talk a little bit about you know what 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 concerns you about this year's team. What 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 is the team? Uh, what's your what are your goals and what what are your primary concerns to, to to reach those goals? Well, you know, I think I don't know if it's a concern or just a you know a new opportunity, but uh, you know we've got some some playing time to be had, and you know I think you know practice has been fun because we've got a lot of competition out there, and not real sure who's gonna fill the shoes of, of Kendra Wells and, and Martika Hull, who were our two leading rebounders. And, of course, Kitty, you know, is, is uh, a, an, was a historic rebounder here in McNeese history. And, you know, I mean, she, she led us in rebounding the last four years. And, um, you know, so we're, we have a lot of shoes to fill. And I don't know if it's a concern as much as I'm just excited about who's going to take the opportunity because there are a lot of opportunities to be had on our team. And, uh you know, I think we've got a great schedule. You know, we're playing eight teams, I believe, that played in postseason last year. You know, we always like to play a tough schedule, and I think it makes us better. You know, I tell the kids every day, you know, it's a journey, and it's a long one, and it's about what we do in January, February, March, you know, and, and what we do early on we have to learn from. And so we're excited about that, but um, just anxious for a new start. Coach, this is Lincoln Rose with the Conference Network. How are you? I'm doing great, Lincoln. I know uh, your colleagues throughout the uh, league are thrilled that the Twins are finally seniors, but there's a, there's a third baggage in the mix. What's that dynamic been like out there? Well, it's it's been good. I, I really like Allison. Allison is the younger sister of Ash and Kate, and 
And uh, she's been a lot of fun to coach. She's real different than them, you know. She doesn't have a twin, so she doesn't have anybody to fight with on the floor, you know. It's it's kind of different. But, uh, you know, the twins are – are really tough on her. I mean, gosh, our coaching staff, we console her more than we coach her, I think, because, you know, the kid can't have 10 coaches now. But uh, she she's doing a great job. You know, she really surprised us early. Uh, you know, I think she's playing very well and a lot tougher than I thought she would right now. But, again, she's still a freshman, you know, and uh, she's very different than them. You know, they she's not quite – She's just different. You know, she's a different player, totally different. Uh, but I think she's going to see a lot of playing time. You know, I really do. But it's just fun. You know, it's fun having – you know, it's, it's always been fun, I think, coaching the Twins, and they've grown so much since they first got here and their year off. And, you know, just everything's been such a, a growing experience. And then to add another family member, you know, it just makes it more of a family environment than it already was, uh, if that's possible. During the preseason practices, do you notice a new level of just uh, competition following two deep runs into March the past couple of seasons? Yeah, I really do. You know, I don't know that the younger kids really understand it. You know, I don't know that they really understand what's happened before and, you know, all that. But Ash and Kate and Adrian Minor are three fifth-year seniors. You know, it's, a, it's an odd class to have because I've got three seniors and they're all fifth year. You know, so Adrian had an injury your freshman year, and the Twins sat out their sophomore year. So just a different dynamic. They're very mature. And uh, what a great dynamic to have with some young kids and new faces in the program. And, yeah, there's a lot of hunger. I think there's a lot of excitement to get better. And, you know, they understand the expectations, and, you know, they understand that, you know, we want to keep taking steps. But, you know, right now it's daily steps. Anything else today for Brooks Donald Williams at McNeese State? Coach, appreciate your time. I uh, wish you the best of luck this season and, and uh, for your conference opener Saturday at Vanderbilt. Well, thanks, Todd. Have a good one. All right, you too. Thank you. Pat, are you with us? Pat, you may need to press star six to unmute your phone line. Hello? Pat, thanks for Hello. joining us. Appreciate yep. it. Uh, joined now by Pat Knight, the head men's coach at Lamar uh, University. He's in his second season there in Beaumont with a 23-12 and 12 record. Uh, Lamar finished first in the East last year, 23-12 uh, and 12 overall, 11-5, and five, uh, and coming off of a, uh, a tournament championship uh, and a berth in the NCAA tournament. Coach, talk a little bit about uh, this year's team and, and how practice has gone and what you're – uh, getting ready for heading into uh, Monday's opener at Kansas State? Well, you know, we have a totally uh, new team this year. Um, I got eight new guys, and probably six of them are going to figure into our rotation and, and being part of our starting lineup. And um, probably the main problem we're going to have, you know, we probably lost, we lost over 90% of our scoring from last year because of the, the really good senior class we had. And, and so, just like a lot of teams around the country, um, we're young. And inexperienced, and and but you know we have the talent, and, and so uh, we have a chance in the pre-conference uh, to get ready for for our tough conference schedule. Um, I just don't think it, we got to have one of the top five pre-conference schedules in the country. You know we uh, play 11 straight games on the road. I don't play a home game until December 29th, and you know our league has a deal where you can pretty much schedule four wins. By playing non-Division One opponents, and I refuse to do that. And so, you know, my pre-conference schedule is not going to be as pretty as others um, around the league. Um, but I just think we'll be uh, better prepared when it comes to conference by just playing a, a strictly Division One pre-conference schedule. And so, I, I think these guys, with the inexperience now, I think we'll have the experience by the time conference comes along. And um, along with the new guys, you know, I, I have three seniors that I think were, you know, have shown improvement and uh, played some for us last year. And, and Dolly Miner has been a really good um, player for us so far in practice, been a really good leader. And, you know, he was one of the first guards off the bench for us last year. Sam Brown, who's our starting center, we have him coming back. And so, uh, for me, it's kind of been, you know, we'll, those are our two starters, and we got to figure out who the next three 
are going to be in there. And we still have time. We have five days before we open up for Kansas State. But um, just like we, uh, like Dave was talking about, you know, we just got a lot of question marks and a young team, but the talent's there. And, and as a coach, you just can't be so concerned with this year. you got to look how bright the future is. And I think the future is really bright with all these new guys. All right, we'll go ahead and open up for questions now for Pat Knight, the men's head coach at Lamar. Media may, may need to press star six to unmute your phone line, and we do ask that you identify yourself by name and media organization prior to asking a question. Hey, Coach, coach. this is Jimmy Trammell from uh, the Tulsa Paper. Uh, yep. You, you have familiarity with, uh, certainly a lot of familiarity with, with the Sutton. Uh, what do you think Oral Roberts brings to the league? It totally improves our basketball uh, foundation as a league. You know, uh, it's a name, and when it comes to basketball, they they pretty much have – what I like about them, they have the same belief I do when it comes to pre-conference scheduling. If you look at them, um, playing all Division One teams, uh, going on the road a lot, um, I just think it makes us a stronger basketball conference. And, and we need that because, you know, majority of our schools, I mean, Louisiana and Texas, it's a football um, conference. And for us to get more recognition from basketball, we have to have names like Oral Roberts in this league. And I think it does nothing but help us. And then from a personal standpoint, I don't have two better friends in the business than, than uh, the Sutton brothers. And, and so uh, from that standpoint, I'm really glad in the league. But from a business standpoint, it just enhances our league, you know, because if we can ever get this league – uh, to where it's not just a one bid league and get our RPI up. You know, we need more teams like Oral Roberts. And, and I just think, even though we've lost three teams uh, out of this league by adding Oral Roberts, we haven't missed a beat. I appreciate it. Hey, Pat, Bob West with Port Arthur News. <laughs> How's it going? Hey, I'm. Uh... I just wonder, have you ever been around a situation or heard of a situation where a team had as many new players as you have on your team? Have you, have you ever familiar with ever, that ever happening? Well, uh, no. You know, I've been in situations where we maybe have four guys or five guys, but not so many. is eight, uh, you know, and we knew it too, you know, when we took over the job from the standpoint, you know, from a recruiting standpoint, that it was going to be a big class. And plus, you, you, you know, you're going to have some kids that, that, that leave the program when you take over. But we knew it coming in that uh, this would be a big class, but we got to straighten it out. You just can't take, you know, you got to have a good mix of junior college and high school kids to kind of get things separated. And you just can't have um, so many of one or the other and make these classes so big. And But we knew coming in it, it – first couple of years we'd have to get the numbers straightened out and you know we actually have it on our board in our assistant's office the kids by class to kind of make sure we don't have this problem um again mm -hmm. had a follow-up are, are you able to go to any uh, on any recruiting trips to aau tournaments whatever las vegas stuff you go to uh, the, are people still mentioning the press conference from last year Oh, yeah, I get it ever. Even when I go to, on just regular trips to, like, you know, I went to Chicago a couple times, and people come up to me at the hotel. They come up to me at restaurants and bars. And, and uh, yeah, I get I, <laughs> I get it all the time. So um, it's just one of those, de you know, it's one of those deals. Uh, and, you know, and it's not like ESPN's ever going to quit showing it. So it's one of those deals that, you know, it never dies. And so, you know, someone came up to me the other day, it's like, it's going to be like uh, Coach Moore and his uh, Indianapolis right. Colts. Well, I was like, well, heck, if it's that way, maybe when I'm done and retired, I can get a Coors Light commercial out of it. So <laughs> maybe it won't be as bad. But, yeah, it's just one of those deals. And uh, But I take it as a positive because, you know, like I'm going to the Atlantic, uh, the Atlanta airport, and I'm ordering some food, and the guy giving me my food uh, starts talking, hey, Coach Knight, I mean, and enjoyed the watching your team, enjoyed the uh, the press conference, and you know that's a guy in Atlanta, Georgia. So to me, I just look at it as long as people are recognizing our name and, and it's getting out there, instead of just being a name in Texas, we got to take it as a positive. All right. 
But my one goal though this year is uh, to stay off of YouTube, so if anyone knows that. <laughs> Other questions today for Pat Knight at Lamar. All right, Coach, appreciate your time today. Wish you the best of luck this season and, and uh, Monday at, at uh, K-State. All right, thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Coach Tidwell, are you with us? I am. All right, joined now by Larry Tidwell, the women's head coach at Lamar. Um, uh, you are 106 and 55 uh, in your sixth season uh, there, coming off a season in which – uh, the Lady Cardinals were 16 and 15 overall, and eight and eight in the league. Um, uh, that was a third place finish in the East Division. Uh, made, uh, I believe, your seventh consecutive appearance in the conference tournament. Uh, Coach, talk about uh, your team and how practice has been going. Well, the team this year um, is a little bit more athletic. Uh, we signed some post players. I got one from Trinity Valley College, Alice Robinson, and got a post player from Lon Morris Junior College and Dominic Edwards, and also a, a 6'1 post player out of Odessa College, uh, Carolina Odessa. And we're able to get up and down the floor and we're able to rebound better, and I, that was one of my biggest weaknesses was rebounding, and that's what we really emphasized. And we're undersized in the post, uh, but we're so much more athletic, and we can do a lot more things with this uh, versatility. All right, we'll go ahead and open it up for questions now for Larry Tidwell, the women's head coach at Lamar. Hey, Larry, Bob West, Port Arthur News. Hi, Bobby. Good. Uh, you, you just said you're undersized in the post, uh, so how's that compute to defending Brittany Griner Friday at Baylor? I think what we're going to do, Bob, is we're going to get all five of them and just guard her and make the other four beat us. I've been watching, uh, been watching tape on them, of course. Uh, Brittany Griner is the best post player in the country without a question, probably the best player. But they also have the best, I think, the best guard in the country in Odyssey Sims. So you picked your poison, and then with uh, Kim Mulkey robinson you got one of the best coaches, if not the best coach in the nation. So it's, it's going to be a tough opener, but, again, it's a uh, – a chance to go back to where I started my uh, college roots in, in Baylor when I went to Baylor in uh, 1991 and uh, go up and see some good friends. And second game in a row where we've opened up with the national champions. Last year it was A&M. So if uh, people want to get a good shot to winning winning the national championship, they better try to schedule us early. <laughs> Larry, what was the reaction of your players when uh, when you told them that you were going to open with Baylor? Uh, it was uh, one of, uh, you know, their their eyes were really wide. I mean, they, they were pretty excited about it. And, and we've approached it from the very first workout. You know, we're not going to have the, the deer in the headlights look. We're going to go up there and we're going to play confident. Uh, we played them up at their tournament, uh, I guess it was two seasons ago. And played them really well. I think the the final count was around 20 points. But, you know, there before halftime, we were running them. That's when we had Jenna Plumley, you know, running our show for us. And that was the last time that we went to the NCAA tournament. So we have a lot of uh, positives from going up there. Uh, we've been, you know, like I said, we went to Tennessee. We've been in LSU. We've been in Texas. I mean, we played a lot of people that have won national championships. And so, and A&M, of course. And so, we're, we're just trying to gauge our program and, and see where we're at. And, and our kids are excited about this challenge. And, uh, you know, the thing is also is we're going to be on Fox Sports TV. We play Friday at noon. So uh, it gives, um, you know, we're going to go up and represent our conference as good as we can because I am very, and I will make this for sure, I am very proud to be in the Southland Conference. And I think our league is very, very good, both women and men. Coach, this is Lincoln Rose uh, with the Conference Network. How are you? Lincoln, I'm uh, day to day. That's how, okay. that's how I am. <laughs> uh, the, the added size, how can that free up Khalif this year? And is there any room for improvement for number five? Uh, yes, there is. I mean, she works hard on her game. I mean, this is a young lady who's been all conference two years in a row and picked, you know, preseason all conference. And she probably spends as much time out on the floor as anybody. And, she wants to get better. She wants to play after, you know, this season's over with at the next level. 
but we're able to uh, go out and set some set some really good screens for her and get her open. Um, Jasmine Henderson has come back and, and she's looking good for me. As is Gia Ayers. I finally got that point guard situation settled. You know, I used about four of them last year, but Cleese is getting very comfortable with her. Her and Ren Baylor are working good together, and and like I said, I, I think I'm going to have a, a good bench with uh, Shauna Long and got to get Taylor Hayes in shape. She's been a little bit sick, but. We've, we've got a lot of kids that have had a lot of playing time, so this, this should be a pretty good year for us. What, what questions about your team do you think will likely be answered by the time conference rolls around? Uh, we just got to – we're going to be able to get to the rim, and we've always been able to do that with our four-out, one-in offense. But the thing that we have to do is we have to finish Lincoln at the rim, and we didn't finish at the rim last year. And then we've got to get better uh, rebounding, and we've addressed that need. And, you know, like I said, uh, my staff has done a good job. Ashley Crawford, Sonny, about to play today. And, you know, of course, I lost Joey Wells, lost a great coach, and Joey went to Indiana State, but have replaced him with uh, John Ishi. And, and everybody's pulling their weight, and everybody's doing a good job. And we're very anxious about the season started, getting started, and we just want to – get back to the level of where Lady Cardinal basketball has been. And, you know, I'm, from my standpoint of it, too, um, I'm glad to be just coaching basketball. I'm a special assistant to President Simmons, but I do some things for him. But I was glad to um, turn that athletic director over to uh, Jason Henderson, and we like that. He's doing a great job for us. And so that makes your job easier when you have good administration that supports you. We look forward to seeing you all pretty early on in the conference slate. Well, good to see you, and uh, good luck to everybody in the conference. Coach, appreciate your time. Uh, wish you the best of luck this season and at Baylor on Friday. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. Scott, are you with us? May need to press star six to unmute your phone line. I'm here. All right. Joined now by... Scott Sutton, the head men's coach at Oral Roberts. Welcome to the Southland. Thanks. Great to be here. I know I speak for uh, all our coaches and administration. It's, it's exciting and uh, it'll be challenging, but uh, we're, we're, we're very thrilled to be a part of the Southland and, and what it represents and the history of this league. You're uh, bringing in uh, a quite established program in men's basketball. You're 250 wins, 162 losses. Through 13 years at ORU, last year 27 and 7 uh, overall, 17 and 1 in the Summit League, which was uh, good enough for first. Coach, talk a little bit about your team, what you have coming back from that that uh, squad that that uh, played in the uh, NIT last year. Well, we have a good nucleus coming back. We lost a terrific player in Dominic Morrison, who um, scored over 2,000 points in his career, and, and really was the heart and soul of this team for the past couple of years. But, you know, we have three guys that have started throughout their careers, and I think all three of them are uh, have a chance to, to really elevate their games. They, they all three have kind of played in the shadows of Dominique the past couple of years. But that's Stephen Roundtree, who uh, was a freshman in the year two years ago in the in the Summit League. Last year he was the sixth man of the year. Warren Niles, who's been on the uh, – uh, I believe has been on a second-team all-league. And then Damon Bellholter. Uh, who is our center. So all three of those guys have played a lot of basketball. Um, they've won a bunch of games. And then we added a transfer who is very, very talented and Sean Glover, who started as a sophomore two years ago at University of Utah and led us in scoring our first ex- first exhibition game last Thursday night uh, with 22 points. So those four guys uh, are very experienced. The, the rest of our team, not so much. Uh, we're starting a, a redshirt freshman at point who – Ten days ago wasn't the point. He was a scoring guard. We've had some issues with our point guard play. One uh, a junior college player didn't get eligible. Uh, our only returning point guard uh, got hurt uh, the last couple of weeks. So we, we moved Corey Bilberry to point guard, and he's been terrific. He's been really good for us. Uh, so the rest of the guys are, are young and inexperienced, but uh, they're very talented. And I think uh, in time they'll develop into nice players. We'll go ahead and open it up for questions now for Scott Sutton, the men's head coach at ORU. Media, you may need to press star six to unmute your phone line. 
we do ask that you identify yourself by name and media organization. Coach Lincoln Rose with the Conferences Television Network. How are you doing? Good, Lincoln. How are you? Doing well. Our, our coverage actually begins with your game against Oklahoma, the one uh, non-conference matchup, and I'm thinking you actually may be more familiar with the Sooners than you are with much of your uh, your new conference <laughs> opponents. Uh, what will the Without gauntlet question. What will the gauntlet be like uh, once you hit conference play, starting from scratch with uh, nine brand new scouting reports? Well, it's like playing, uh, especially the first go around, be like playing nine uh, non conference games or nine different non conference games, and because I, I am not familiar at all with the personnel as far as players. I am familiar with a few coaches, um, and I have a lot of respect for the coaches in this league. That's one thing. You know, Brooks Thompson and I uh, were, were college teammates and, and really close, and I, I followed the league closely the last several years. And we've played against Danny at Stephen F. We played against Mike at um, Northwestern. You know, seems like a decade ago. Uh, and then I've played against Pat. And you know, the, those three guys are excellent coaches. And uh, I've always told Brooks I, I thought this league had excellent coaches and. You know, that's what I'll expect, but it's going to be different. Uh, it's going to be difficult going into new places, not only preparing for a different team, but also going into places you've never been, uh, whether it's travel, whether it's, uh, you know, how the crowd's going to be, uh, how the how the arena is, is it a shooting gym, if it's not a shooting gym. So uh, it'll be an adjustment that hopefully our guys mature enough to, that we'll be able to, to handle that and go on the road and have some success. Other questions for Scott Sutton at Oral Roberts. Coach, I think you have a lot of newcomers on your team. Uh, how are those guys uh, acclimating, and has anyone uh, stood out? Well, I, I mentioned Corey Bilberry, who uh, is a restaurant freshman, and he's he's been great for us. Um, we've had some injuries, a couple freshmen. Corbin Byford, who was the, the player of the year in the state of Oklahoma, who is a uh, 6'6 wing that uh, I think in time is going to be a great player or has a chance to be a great player. But he's he's been banged up with an ankle injury. He just got back to practice yesterday. But going into uh, the practice, I, I thought he was the one freshman that – or one of the freshmen that, that I would count on more than uh, maybe some of the others. So once he gets healthy, I think he'll be in a rotation. Jordan Byford – I mean, Jordan Kaufman, our big 6'11 center from Wichita, has been up and down, but he, he's uh, – He's had some great practices. He, he's had some practices that he looked like a freshman, but he, he's going to be a good player. So those two young guys, uh, I think, have a chance to, to be in our rotation. We don't play a lot of guys. We'll probably play eight or nine guys. But certainly those two will, uh, will be in the mix. Uh, you're picked as the favorite in the Southland uh, this year. Uh, what kind of pressure does that add? I don't think it adds any. I mean, we've we've been – picked numerous times, or not numerous, several times to, to win, and I've always said it doesn't matter what you're picked in preseason. you got to go out there and play, and I think our guys uh, you know, we were picked first last year in the, in, in the summit, and they went out and did a great job won 17 or 18 games, so uh, I'm not, you know, I'm not too concerned about the pressure of, uh, uh, of being tabbed the favorite. I am concerned about going on to these trips and, and these playing these teams that I'm not familiar with. All right, Scott, uh, appreciate your time. Wish you the best of luck this season. Look forward to seeing your teams play, and uh, good luck Friday at uh, UTEP. Okay, thanks, guys. Thank you. Misty, are you with us? Yes, sir. All right, uh, joined now by uh, Misty Cusin, uh, the women's head coach at Oral Roberts. Um, uh, you're in uh, your f first season. Uh, the team was 20 and 11. Uh, last year and 14 and uh, four, uh, second place place finisher in the Summit League. Coach, talk ab about coming to the conference. Welcome, uh, uh, first off. But tell us tell us about uh, what you have uh, with this team uh, in your first season in the Southland. Yeah, well, thank you, thank you for the welcome. We're looking forward to it. I'll echo Scott's sentiment, sentiments that we're <clears throat> we're excited to be a part of the Southland Conference and excited for the direction of basketball for both the men's and women's programs in it. And um, you know, our team that we're returning this year, uh, we've got a strong senior class that's gotten a lot of playing time under their belt the last three years. We also graduated three. Um, 
major contributing seniors this last season as well. Um, a lot of our inside uh, physical punch uh, is what we've graduated. So, but coming back this year, uh, Kevy Looper, a highly decorated player for us, a shooting guard um, from Northeast Oklahoma here. Um, who is already the all-time ORU leading scorer before she goes into her senior year. And then we've got a point guard, J.C. Bigham, who's been running the show for us the past three seasons. And then kind of a third uh, blue-collar player, uh, Savannah Buck, a little inside-outside position. But a real strong senior class, but um, a lot of holes to fill around them at this point coming into our first season. All right. We'll go ahead and open it up for questions now for Misty Cusin, the women's head coach at Oral Roberts. Hey, Misty, this is Jimmy Trammell from the Tulsa World. Hey, Jimmy. You're going to open the season in a couple of days against a city rival, University of Tulsa. How do you feel about opening opening up against uh, them? That's bad scheduling. I think we've got to laugh a little bit with the TU staff also. They're all good friends and acquaintances. And um, anytime we, we call it our PSO Mayor's Cup, you know, here in Tulsa. And uh, I don't think we've ever opened with the Mayor's Cup here in Tulsa before. But um, they've got a much improved squad <clears throat> from the, the the previous couple of years. And um, they've got a new coaching staff that just took over the helm there at TU last year. Um, but a lot of Oklahoma girls on both rosters. And so the players are very familiar with one another. And that creates for a great rivalry anytime our team universities play one another. I wasn't aware that they were all kind of buddies. That's, uh, I mean, off the court, they're, the ORU gals and the Tulsa gals are friends. Oh, I think a lot of them know each other. You know, sometimes we've recruited some of the similar, similar players as well. So even through unofficial recruiting visits and things like that, they, they kind of get to know them. And, and then there are times uh, during the summer that they'll come together for open gyms whenever there aren't quite enough collegiate players on either campus with summer sure. school. Um, so just a lot of familiarity and a lot of them played against each other when they were in high school as well. Thank you. Other questions for Misty Cusin? Coach, maybe maybe a personal note. What what does it mean to be the head coach after so many years as an assistant? Um, it's I've had a great job for 16 years here at ORU, and I'm following a great head coach and a good friend and Jerry Finkbeiner. And um, you know, Jerry. Uh, was my coach my last two years collegiately at Southern Nazarene University and gave me my first opportunity to coach with him. Uh, but it's also been a labor of love here at ORU. You know, I got to be with him his very first season here at ORU, and, and we've we've built a program from the very beginning. And um, it, it, But it's good timing. I'm excited for him and his move to Utah State, uh, but these are also girls that, that I know and love and have recruited. And, and so it's, it's a nice transition, um, but I, I wasn't waiting in a hot seat either. I had a great job as an assistant. I have an even better job now as a head coach here at ORU, but um, I, I love this university and what we stand for, and, and the young ladies who are here is a part of it. What changes do you think uh, uh, your fans will, will see between your staff and the previous staff? You know, I think our goal over the next couple of years, and this, this will have to take place as we recruit uh, new players to come here to ORU, but I think we will begin to make some adjustments to match a little bit more of the style of the Southland. Um, we've been a predominantly zone team the past two or three seasons especially um, and really pushed the tempo uh, with, with the dribble drive motion. Um, we don't have quite as many horses in the stable right now uh, as far as our depth is concerned. And, and then I think one of the things that we want to get back into balance a little bit is being able to, to play a little bit more of our, our traditional man that we did uh, for the first decade that we were here at ORU. So, but um, I think there are a lot of similarities at the same time to what we've been successful with for the past several years. But um, it'll, it'll, It'll take, a, take, take some time to show uh, much of a morph because we've got a lot of returning players that are comfortable in a system already, and we want to be able to, to show them off uh, with, with the comfort level that they already have. Any other questions today for Misty Cusin at Oral Roberts? All right, Coach, appreciate your time. Thank you. Great, Best thank of you. luck. Danny, are you with us? Yes, okay. Danny Casper here. All right. Uh, joined now by Danny Casper, the head men's coach at Stephen F. Austin. Uh, you're in your 13th season there, 219 wins, 158 losses, finished 20 and 12 last year, which uh, was second uh, in in the West. Uh, you made uh, your uh, seventh consecutive appearance in the conference tournament. Coach, tell us what you have coming back. Well, we have uh... – Start off with our uh, two, three, two starters uh, 
that started every game for us. Antonio Bostic, he was the first team all conference performer. Uh, he has steadily improved since his arrival here as a sophomore out of junior college, uh, three year player for us. This will be his third year. He's gotten better and better. He's, he, you know, he's gotten stronger, and that's really helped his game. Uh, last year we were very banged up. We had three players that on scholarship that never got to play because of injury, uh, and uh, we had two others that were off and on. So. I think Antonio was either the leading uh, minutes played guy in the league or second, one of the two. And he had a, he had a nice year, I think 11-plus points per game. Uh, we're going to need a little bit more from him, though. I told him I'd sure like for him to average a little bit more like 14 or 15, and, and that has to come from you know more accurate shooting. He was a 43% shooter last year, and I'd like to get that up to the upper 40s, you know, around 50 percentage mark. He's become a better defender, uh, still not where I want him to be, uh, but he's definitely a better defender than most. And, uh, you know, he's got good size, six foot three, maybe six, three and a half long arms. And uh, he, he's, he's, he's really a, a pleasure to coach. He's a good young man who should graduate in May, and we're very, you know, happy with his contributions to our program. Our other full time starter was a young man named Desmond Heyman, averaged about eight and a half, maybe nine. More of a, we ran more of a three guard offense because he's about six three and a half. Also, uh, you call him small forward or maybe the third big guard, and he averaged, like I said, about eight and a half, maybe nine points a game and about four rebounds a game. And we, uh, he's a very good leader for us. Uh, captain as a sophomore, will should be captain based on what I'm seeing this year. He's he's definitely our team leader. And uh, but we need a little bit more scoring from him. I've made that very clear to him. Maybe a little bit more rebounding, uh, and uh, hopefully he'll be able to improve on his scoring average and his shooting percentage also. But uh, he too has came to us averaging 32 points a game out of a high school in Mississippi, and they never asked him to play any defense. And so we've he's come around to the point where I think he's 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 pretty good at it, and uh, we're proud of him. Uh, first team academic all conference selection last year. And then our, we have two part-time starters. Uh, uh, Taylor Smith, a preseason first-team all-conference player, has uh, led the country in field goal percentage, one of the better, one of the top, I think, five or six rebounders in the league last year and one of the sh- greater shot blockers. Uh, he averaged about nine points, maybe nine and a half, and uh, about, I was, I'm going to say somewhere around six rebounds. And a lot of, if you take... If you take his stats after Christmas, he's up there probably more around 12 points a game and around eight rebounds a game. Like a lot of junior college players, it took him a semester to get going. And uh, But he's, he's, he, he did a great job for us last year. He wouldn't have finished second in the league. And uh, we had a 12-4 overall mark, and only UTA had a better league mark than we did. And so uh, without him, we wouldn't have gotten there. At times I thought, you know, I was very upset when he didn't get any kind of – all-conference honors because I really believed he deserved it based on his contributions to our success. Then the fourth young man who started a few games and then developed a foot problem and played, you know, probably only 12, 15 minutes a game because of that is Jacob Parker, a freshman uh, uh, last year, a sophomore this year, power forward about six, 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 seven, maybe 210 pounds, 215. And Jacob's feet are better this year. He still has some you know, foot problems, but not as severe as last year. Uh, a very good passer and shooter. Uh, and those four players uh, are the core of our team. We do have a returning point guard, Hal Bateman, who was back up to our starter last year, played 17 minutes a game, coming back, and and uh, had some very good games last year and didn't have some very good games. So he needs to become more consistent for us. And uh, then we have Joe Bright, who uh, was battling a knee injury and did not even begin to play till December 1st. And Joe only gave us about 10 minutes a game because of his injury. And that completes the six, the names of the six people returning for us. We also have another player who redshirted last year because of an injury sustained at the end of his high school career, uh, Thomas Walkup. We brought in six recruits, uh, two freshmen, four JUCO. Uh, we need. Uh, I don't know if any of our recruits will break in the starting lineup, but I do need several of them 
Uh, we do need several of them to give us meaningful minutes if we are to compete for the title. And uh, so I, 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 right now I would tell you that, you know, four positions are pretty much locked in. As far as starters, we have one position that I'm still not as sure about as we enter Friday's game. I, uh, I'll probably go with the returning player, but we've had a good battle at our point guard spot, and we'll see, you know, how that goes throughout the year. All right, we'll open it up for questions now for Danny Casper, the head men's coach at Stephen F. Austin. Coach, you know, you're one of two schools in the country to be in the top ten nationally in scoring defense each of the last five years. What do you, or how do you expect this year's team to stack up against the previous rosters that you've coached? Well, you know, it, it's it's – it's, it's something we really emphasize here. Uh, uh, I, I do believe, in particularly last year's team, which was, I believe was ranked number three, you know, we would not have gotten that second-place finish in 20 wins based on our offensive skills alone. We really did have to D up to uh, beat some teams in our league uh, that offensively I thought were better than us. And I still believe, to some degree, that is the case. I think we're better offensively, but I don't know if we can compete with, you know, a couple of two, three programs in, in the league if we just try to go out there and outscore them. Uh, so we really don't have a choice because they're being, I'm, I'm demanding it of them that they play defense if they want to play. And uh, I do believe we'll still be – you know, hopefully we'll be one of the better defending teams in the league. And, uh, you know, as I heard one very prominent coach in the country say at a clinic recently, you have to limit your teams to less than one shot per possession if you want to win a lot of games. And I agree with that statement, particularly if your offensive skill level is not the best in the league. And so that is our philosophy is – you know, very blunt with our kids and telling them that you, if you want to win this thing, you're going to have to be maybe the best defensive team in the league or certainly one of the top two or three. And so we work on it. I think we'll be there again. Uh, let's hope we stay healthy. Uh, we have not been injured this year like we were last year. We were, the last two years, we've been hit beset by a rash of injuries. And, uh, you know, we hope and pray that we'll have a healthy group this year. If we do, I do think we can seriously contend for the title if we stay healthy. Questions for Danny Casper at Stephen F. Austin. Coach, I know the last few seasons the strength of your team have have been in the middle with your post play, uh, but it looks though as it might have shifted and could be you could be more of a perimeter team this season. Do you do you see it that way? I do think we do have to score more from the perimeter. I do think Taylor Smith is a good has improved his offensive game. We took a we also signed a junior college big man uh, out of Mississippi Gulf Coast Community College that is capable of scoring some points for us. But I don't think either of these players have the offensive skill set that a Gerald Scott and in particular Matt Kingsley had. Uh, so for the last you know five years we've had a pretty good center. Uh, in the post, and uh, there is going to be an offensive drop-off from uh, from those two. I don't think, matter of fact, I think that as far as a defender and a rebounder, I do think our center this year is probably better than both those two players. So, uh, but yes, to answer your question, I do think we have to get a little bit better skill production from the perimeter if we want to contend for the title the way we, you know, have been for the last several years. Does anyone have a question for Danny Casper at SFA? You may need to press star six to unmute your phone line. All right, Coach, uh, appreciate your time today. Wish you the best of luck, and good luck Friday against Howard Payne. Okay, have a good day. Brandon, are you with us? Yes, sir. All right, joined now by Brandon Schneider, the head women's coach at Stephen F. Austin. Uh, You're in your third season there with a 35-28 and 28 record, finished 23-10 and 10 last year and 11-5 and five in conference play, uh, finished second um, second in the West uh, Division. Um, 
Coach, talk about talk about your team, how practice has been, and what we can expect from the Lady Jacks this season. Well, we turned we returned far more experience uh, than we had a year ago. Uh, our first year here, we inherited all 13 players, uh, brought in nine new ones. Uh, so practices in year two obviously went uh, pretty slow. A lot of teaching. Um, this year we have nine returners. Uh, we returned the freshman of the year in Portia Roberts and the newcomer of the year in Ashley Mel. All guests have been unmuted. And um, just feel like that, uh, you know, we're a lot farther along maybe than we were when, when we arrived in Nacogdoches. All right, we'll go ahead and open it up for questions now for Brandon Schneider, the women's coach at SFA. Yes, we've had to uh, unmute everyone's line. It appears that uh, some folks were having issues unmuting uh, their own lines. If you wish to mute your line, you may press star six, but if you wish to, wish to ask a question, you may keep it uh, unmuted at this time. You are now muted. You are no longer muted. All right. Um, Coach, you still there? Yes, I am. <laughs> All right. Um, Looking back at last season, how impressive was it uh, to you to see a young nucleus come together so quickly and make a push for the conference uh, title? Well, I thought we made a lot of progress. You know, we had uh, uh, at least two freshmen in the starting lineup in, in every single game. Uh, about 75% of our games, we had uh, three freshmen in the starting lineup. Um, you know, we just really tried to preach, uh, you know, getting better each and every day and, and uh, strive to, to be playing our best basketball. And when March rolled around, and I think we were fortunate that that, that was the case. Uh, you know, we were the only team in the conference to, to beat every team in the conference. Unfortunately, we probably lost some games uh, to a couple of the teams that were lower in the standings that we shouldn't have. Uh, I think that was just uh, probably uh, due to lack of maturity and experience and and hopefully uh, that won't be the case this year. Questions for Brandon Schneider, the women's coach at SFA. Hey, Coach, this is Jimmy Trammell from the newspaper in Tulsa. At what point did you know Portia Roberts was special? Well, really when we started working with her, um, just because she was such a – a coachable kid. Uh, she's got a very high motor. She she works hard every single day. Um, just really soaks up, uh, you know, and, and responds so well to coaching. I think that's when we knew, um, you know, she had a chance to to become a, a very good player in this league um, early on in her career. I appreciate it. Coach, you and incorporate five new players uh, on this year's squad. Uh, can you talk about what they bring to the table? Um, well, we're, we're hopeful that our two junior college transfers, one out of, out of Murray State in Oklahoma uh, and one out of Howard College uh, here in Texas, uh, K.K. Gerald is a point guard. Uh, we really think our, our point guard play has a chance to be quite a bit better than it has uh, the last couple of years. We returned Brittany Matthew, who who started 16 games, uh, but KK has is, is, is been really competitive, uh, so much so that we're probably going to play those guys together some. Uh, and, and one position that, that we've tried to recruit a little bit to our system uh, is the four spot. Well, we play a little bit different style, and uh, we think Antoinette Carter really fits the, the versatility of the type of player that we need in that spot. Any other questions for Brandon Schneider at SFA? All right, Coach, appreciate your time. Wish you the best of luck this year, and good luck Friday against uh, Louisiana Monroe. Thank you very much. Jason, are you with us? Yes, I am. All right, joined now by Jason Hooten, the head men's coach at Sam Houston State, uh, now in his third season uh, with a 31 and 32 uh, record. It, the Bearcats were 13 and 19 last year, finished seven and nine, uh, which was fourth uh, in the West uh, Division. Coach, talk about your team, how practice is going, and what we can expect from the Bearcats this season. Well, I think like everybody else, right now at this time of the year, you, you feel pretty good about your team, um, just due to working hard and seeing improvement every day. Um, you know, obviously we've got. 
six foot. You are now muted. New guys, so our roster looks a little bit different for the second year in a row. And right now we're just trying to get some stability to where, you know, hopefully this time next year we'll, we'll have 12 returners uh, as we only have one senior on our team. So um, they're working hard. We have, a, we have a good group. The things that we wanted to really do recruiting-wise this year was improve offensively. Um, you know, as Coach Casper said a while ago, you know, defense has not been one of our problems here uh, at Sam Houston State and in our program. We were 28th in the country last year in points given up and 53rd in the country in field goal defense, which is usually the one that we feel is the most important. Uh, so defensively, we were we were pretty good last year, um, but our 13 and 19 record had a lot to do with us only averaging 59 points a game. So, you know, we were 254th in the country in offense, and that's a, a part that we felt like we needed to improve in. And we felt that it started with shooting, and that's what we tried to do was go out and recruit some some guys that could really shoot the ball. And so far. You know, only being practiced in two scrimmages, we, we feel like that that's definitely an area that we've improved in this year. Um, you know, we lost six games last year by two possessions or less. And, you know, again, we, we gave up 60 points a game but only scored 59. So we, we've got to improve offensively. And if we can continue to guard like we have the last two years, then I think we'll have a chance to, to be better this year. All right, we'll go ahead and open it up for questions now for Jason Hooten, the men's head coach at Sam Houston State. Coach, talk a little bit about the three uh, returning players uh, from last year, uh, Michael Holyfield and, and backup guards, uh, Aaron Harwell and Markel McKinney. Um, actually, the, the three returners that'll be, that were three of our better players last year are are Demarcus Gatlin and Darius Gatson. Those two guys started every game last year at the guard spot. And then, uh, obviously, Mike, Mike Holyfield in the middle. Um, Mike has, has gotten a lot better. Uh, he's put on another 10 or 15 pounds, and, you know, he's 6'11 and about 265 now. Um, but he's still just a, just a hard worker. I mean, he's improved drastically from last year and it's just because he's so coachable and he comes in every day and wants to get better um is he uh, gilberto clavel inside scoring no he's he's not there yet um but we feel like he's definitely improved since last season and and he will give us someone in the middle that a lot of schools in our league don't have size wise so we're, we're excited about him in the future and, and what he'll hopefully do for us uh this year uh darius and demarcus um their names are, are just alike. They both begin with a D, and their last names both start with G-A-T. So uh, I get confused with them still every day after a year. But, you know, those two guys were, you know, two of our leading guards last year. Um, like Coach Casper also said, you know, we're expecting a whole lot more out of those guys because they're returners and also because after a year of Division I, um, under their belt, I expect that they'll shoot better from the field. Um, a lot of that has to do with shot selection, and also a lot of that has to do with just hopefully uh, improvement over a year. But but those are two guys that we're going to need a lot out of, uh, off, you know, not only from the leadership standpoint, but also from point production and and just overall play. Um, the two other guys you mentioned, Aaron Harwell and Markel McKinney. Markel, you know, last year came in as a walk-on. And if it wouldn't have been for him, we might not have made it through the season because of the injuries and all the suspensions and things that we had last year. You know, we only finished the season with seven scholarship players. Uh, actually only played three quarters of the season with seven scholarship players. And so Markel was kind of a, a walk-on that was really solid and got a lot of minutes. And I brought him in when the season was over and put him on a scholarship because he deserved it and earned it. And he's been really good this fall. He's a solid player. Um, he is a true role player, and he'll do whatever that we ask him to do, and I'm excited about him. And Aaron Hallwell is the same thing. You know, a backup guard last year that, you know, may even uh, go from second second time, second playing time to third playing time this year, but he still uh, maintains a positive attitude, and he's really got great leadership, and he, he comes to work and works hard every day. Um We've got a freshman point guard that 
I'm really excited about uh, Paul Baxter from Austin Bowie High School. Uh, he's the son of Ron Baxter, who played at Texas back in the 70s and on the NIT National Championship team. But Paul is, is, is going to be really good in the Southland Conference. He's got a chance to um, maybe be freshman of the year in our conference. And uh, I'm really excited about Paul. And he's he's come in and right away really pushed Darius, even though Darius is a senior. So, you know, with new guys, I mean, we've got a couple of more that I think are going to step in and help us, and we're going to have to uh, have those guys step in and help us right away. Questions for Jason Hooten at Sam Houston. Coach, I know, I know you uh, already mentioned Paul Baxter. Talk about some of your other uh, new faces in your program. Uh, after, you know, three weeks of practices and, and, and the two scrimmages that we've had, uh, another young man that I think will, will be a good player for us this year is Jeremy McKay from uh, Wallace State. And he's from Headland, Alabama. He's a little guard. He's only about 5'9 or 5'10, but he can really shoot it and he can really score. And again, I thought those were the two areas that we lacked in last year. Uh, scoring in general from anywhere, but, but mostly from the guard spot. And so I think Jeremy's going to be a really good player for us at this point in time. Uh, another young man is uh, Will Bond, 6'4 guard from Trinity Valley. Uh, played for a great coach at Trinity Valley in a great program. He's a disciplined young man, great student, and he can really shoot the ball. He's he's shot the ball well so far this year and in the scrimmages, and we're excited about what he brings to the table. Also, another guy that uh, I think can step in and help immediately is Terrence Motley from Western Nebraska. Uh, Terrence is about 6'7", and about 240. Uh, he's a great athlete, great body, and he's going to give us uh, kind of a Southland-type mismatch guy. Uh, can step out and really shoot the ball, but also can go down low and, and get a lot of things done. And then another guy that's probably been one of my favorite thus far is uh, a kid named James Thomas from Navarro. Um, Navarro is known for having guys that uh, come in and, and play really hard immediately like DeMarcus Gatlin did the year before, and JT has, has shown that already. Um, just gets after it every day, uh, has a high, high motor, which are guys that I, that I like a lot and have a lot of success under me and our program, and I think JT will step in and, and give us an inside-out threat that, uh, that we also might have been missing from last year and a little bit of a Marcus James type player, which was a senior last year for us. Anyone, anyone have a question for Jason Hooten at Sam Houston? All right, Coach, I appreciate your time today. Wish you the best of luck, and uh, especially on uh, Friday when you open at Arkansas. We appreciate it. Thanks a lot. All right, thank you. Brenda, are you with us? Brenda? Yes, I'm here. All right. Thanks for joining us uh, today. We're joined now by Brenda Welch-Nichols, the women's head coach at Sam Houston State, uh, now in your seventh year with a 60-115 and record. Last year, uh, the Bearcats uh, were 18-12 and overall and 12-4 and in the Southland Conference, which was first in the West Division. Uh, coach, tell us about your team, what you have back, what you've seen in practice, who stood out. Well, we're real excited this year. I mean, it's it's you don't always get this opportunity in your coaching career to have um, your whole starting lineup back, and you have a fifth-year senior that's leading the way, and you have um, a couple other senior seniors that have, have contributed to our success at Sam Houston. In the last um, two years, we put up over 35 wins, and that's been the best this program's ever done and having that with Brittany Martin um, she's kind of like the the mama on the team and you know she's come out and done a very good job for us um, she averaged about 17 points last year a game and um, we expect big things out of her this year it's just being that fifth year senior makes a lot of difference in maturing a, a team coming up um, we look for Sequina Thomas, who um, led our rebounding with 12 rebounds a game and about 14 points, and it's fun having her back. She's just a horse out there and, and does a really good job for us. Um, one that we look for big things this year, Shanice Smith, our other senior, 
Um, she had to sit out first half last year, only got to play in the second half. I really think she has more to give this year um, and more points to put up. Very consistent shooter, and uh, we expect great things from her. And those three seniors have just done a remarkable job with this program. And um, I'm just kind of sitting here hoping to be the director. And um, they pretty much – they it's kind of weird in practice because they're pretty much doing the job because they've been here for so long. And it, it's just fun. It's fun to have that group that has that leadership. <laughs> uh, we'll go ahead and open it up for questions now for Brenda Welch-Nichols, the women's head coach at Sam Houston State. Coach, I know you returned two first-team all-conference players. Um who combined were leaders in just about every stat category uh, in the league last year. Tell us, tell us about about them, uh, particularly leading scorer Brittany Martin. Well, Brittany's just an all-around kid. Um, she she came in actually. We got her because we offered her to play soccer and basketball, and no one else did. So that's kind of how we sold her at Sam Houston. And um, she ended up giving up soccer and having to sit out a year after hurting herself. And um, she's just one of these kids that she's going to always be in the gym. Um, we have to run her out. Um, you know, she just she wants that. The other day we cut practice short, and she's like, "Is that it?" Um, why aren't we going longer? Um, it's just those, that, that's the type of kid she is. She wants to be a coach when she leaves here, and um, definitely she's going to be a good one. And, and she just thrives on, um, you know, being successful and, and getting the job done. And I, I think she just loves this game so much. So Queen is one of these kids that came in. Um, we had to get on her. We had to push her. We had to, you know, tell her that she's going to be the be a great player if she works harder. The girl went home and just did a remarkable job between her sophomore and junior year and just came back last year and just dominated in a lot of categories. And her strength, her, her upper body, her personality, um, she just gets in there and, and she's a workhorse. I mean, she, she likes to get in there and take take over the game. All right. Questions for Brenda Welch Nichols at Sam Houston. Talk about Shanice Smith. Uh, she doesn't get a lot of media attention uh, that Brittany and Sequina received, but uh, she's been a vital piece in your offense the last three years. Well, Shanice is the grandma on the team, and she pretty much takes care of everybody. And you're right. She doesn't get the media pub. Um, she She's the kid that everybody wants to talk to um, when we're having to represent something. Um, she's just one of these kids that she's going to give a lot this year, and I, I think she's going to come out of her shell and I think playing a full year is going to help her. Um, last year, her sitting out first semester didn't help us at all. It didn't help her game. Um, she is just so ready. She she's biting at the bits to get to get it going. She had a great um, exhibition game the other night. She, she I'm looking forward to what she brings. She always ends up with the ball when you need a shot. She's the one that will get it for you. Um, she's just that kid that you just love. She's all around, and she's on and off the court, great role model, and we're excited. And, you know, we're fixing to leave tomorrow early for the WNIT, and these girls are just ecstatic about having this opportunity to represent same Houston State. You talk about the preseason WNIT, obviously reaching the WBI last year, making Sam Houston's first uh, national postseason tournament appearance. How does that experience uh, and, and the experience of playing uh, in the preseason WNIT, how, how does that help your program with the exposure and, and, and those experiences? Well, I tell you what, any time you can get postseason, it's kind of like our football team last year going at it, you know, getting on TV and all that. It just helps everybody out. And then to turn around for us to be um, asked to play in the WVI and, you know, beating Rice in that first round, you know, that that's just awesome. And we we didn't expect anything of it coming into this year. And when the WNIT called, um, the emotions are huge, uh, especially for me. Coming back to a program that I played in that was at its all-time low and then helping rebuild it. And these kids, Brittany Martin is one of the, the key players um, that's been here the longest with me. Um, she's seen the the reaps that we are, are, are bounding from this program and what we're doing here. And 
and it's just remarkable. And I, I know that Bobby Williams and the administration is very happy with us, and um, the community has really got on board and supported us. And you know, you can't measure yourself as a player without going up against the best. And and I think that's that's what we're doing now. And it, it's really exciting to be a part of the program. Coach, I appreciate your time today. Wish you the best of luck, and, and good luck uh, Friday at Delaware. Thank you. We appreciate it. All right. Thank you. Willis, are you with us? I believe you're muted. If you could unmute your line by pressing star six. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Doing well. All right. Joined now by Willis Wilson, the uh, head coach at Texas A&M Corpus Christi. Now in his second year, uh, the Islanders were six and twenty-four last year, and four and twelve in conference play. Uh, coach, what's yes. year number two like uh, heading in? Well, uh, the good news is year number two is a lot different than year number one. Uh, I'm I'm going to be really curious about our basketball team to see what kind of progress we can make. We feel like uh, last year was a transition year. This year is kind of a rebuilding year. We are a young, young, young basketball team with very little Division One experience, so we're going to have to just rely on on grit and determination and, and uh, circumstance to go out and, and try to win basketball games this year. And I, I, I'm, I've been around this business long enough to know that there's go, there are going to be times where it's not going to be very pretty, and so we're going to just have to learn how to really grind every day that we're on the basketball floor to – to, to uh, create some excitement and, and show some difference from, from what we were a year ago. All right, we'll go ahead and open it up for questions now for Willis Wilson at Texas A&M Corpus Christi. Coach, talk, you, know, you talk about last year and, and, and those experiences. How, how does it prepare you for this year? Oh, I don't know. I, I think last year, in, in, in a lot of respects, is going to make it hard on our coaches because we've – we will go through a lot of the same things that we went through last year simply because we've turned our roster over so much. We've got eight new guys on this year's team, and we're counting on those guys to come in and play, and, and none of those guys has any D1 experience. So I think in a lot of respects we're going to go through many of the same things that we went through a year ago. I think and hope that the difference will be is that we're more talented and that uh, this group of guys will – really work hard at, at playing together and working for each other so that we can get through some of those hurdles uh, faster. Our, our early season schedule is just brutal. And uh, if we can if we can just kind of hang tough and, and keep our sights on uh, where, we're, where we're trying to finish and not where we're trying to start, I think that'll be a big, big plus for us. And, uh, and, and we can maybe develop into a team that will give some people some scares once we get to league play. Uh, what's what's the motivation for this year's squad? The motivation for this year's squad is that there's there's no expectation. I, I think people generally just don't think very much of our team. Uh, we were picked last in in all the standings. We don't have anybody on the all conference teams. Uh, we we have this APR issue that's going to prohibit us from going to postseason and. Uh, so I think there's very little expectation, and and we've got to use that as a as a as a tool to be motivated to want to go out and prove something to people. And certainly from my standpoint, uh, I don't feel like uh, a lot of the issues and concerns that we have as a basketball program are the result of the kids in this program. And so uh, our task is to motivate them to to want to go out and prove people prove to people that we're we're much much better than than the, the credit that we've been shown and the respect that we've been shown to this point. Questions for Willis Wilson. Hey, Willis, this is Jimmy Trammell from the newspaper in, in Tulsa. Because of the situation you're in with, uh, with you know, turning over in new faces, uh, I guess essentially, uh, you know, a sophomore, Jordan, is, is the face of your program right now. Is, is that the question? <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Uh, you know, it, yeah, I guess you could say that. I mean, we're we're a program that's uh, that's in a transitional stage, and so I think there's going to be a lot of guys that are going to emerge over the course of the season. John Jordan is the one guy that has had success at the Division One level in our league last year. He led the league in assists. He's a very talented guy that we're expecting big things out of. Uh, but he is a sophomore. 
anymore. And so it's really, really tough unless you're a top 50 guy nationally coming in to the Division One ranks. It's tough to be the face of a program when you're just a sophomore. I, I think we've got some guys like uh, – like Will Nelson, that certainly is capable of stepping up and and garnering uh, attention from our opponents, and and uh, Joy Williamson is another junior college guy that uh, is going to have to work through some things. But I think he's a guy that we're going to be able to count on for a lot by the time we get to midseason. So I think we have a nucleus, but it just hasn't really formulated uh, to a point where we're going to be the team that we could be later on in the year. Thank you. Coach, how, how do you evaluate those successes? Is it stri- strictly wins and losses, or is there more to it than that? I think the best way for me to evaluate it is just whether or not I can get up the next day. <laughs> um, like I said, I, I just think there's going to be times where it's going to be challenging and difficult. Uh, so far in the two outings that we've had against out comp- outside competition, we've fared pretty well in one and not so well in the other, and I think that's just – the psyche of a young basketball team of knowing and committing to what it takes to be consistent every day, to perform at your best level every day. And young guys don't always know how to do that. I think that's just something that that we're going to have to learn over time. So for me, and I think for our staff, just emotionally, uh, the next day is going to tell a lot about what we're going to have to do and how we're going to have to make adjustments to to, to keep this group uh, headed in the right direction. Anything else for Willis Wilson today? Coach, appreciate your time. Always good to, to hear your voice. Uh, wish you the best of luck this year and, and Saturday in your opener against Texas Lutheran. All right. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Royce, are you with us? May need to press star six to unmute your line. Royce, are you with us? Hello, Royce? Can you help me? I hear you. Are you there? Hello, hello? I hear you. Can you hear us? Hello? Can you hear me? Yes. you can hear me, I'm good. Okay. Uh, joined now by uh, Royce uh, Chadwick, the uh, new head coach at Texas A&M Corpus Christi, um, inherit the team that finished 9-20 and 20 last year and 5-11 and 11 in conference play, tying for fourth in the West Division. Coach, tell us about your team. Well, first of all, we uh, have 16 new players for the most part. Everybody is a first-year girl as far as we're concerned, and They've come out to uh, try to improve. We got a long way to go, and they're trying to fight through the tough times. And uh, we think we got a pretty good uh, group. We just got to get better every single day. All right. We'll go ahead and open it up for questions now for Royce Chadwick, the head women's coach at Texas A&M Corpus Christi. Coach, why don't you talk a little bit about how this team has responded to your style of coaching and, and your philosophy? Well, I think, first of all, they've been stepping up every day. We are in a situation where we're learning an an awful lot of new things, and everybody is uh, really being force-fed. We have some girls that are stepping up and being leaders for our team. I think the the thing that uh, we have to work on is we we tend to drop our head when things aren't going well, and I think that that, uh, comes from youth, uh, inexperience, and uh, possibly not, you know, having a, a tradition of, of we're winning every single time we step out there. So we've had to fight through that, but our players are getting better at it, and, and we are trying to improve every single day. Now talk about uh, Verniqua Taylor and her, you know, she led the conference last year in assists. What will her level of play or how will her, her, her level of play impact the, the team at the point guard? I think anytime you have a senior point guard that uh, is your quarterback, uh, she is going to set the tone for everything we do in our practice, and she leads by example. She's a tremendous defender, uh, one of the most unselfish players I've been around. I think we'll go as she goes early. Uh, I think as she 
steps up and, and understands her role and her value to the team, we'll get better and better as we go through the season. Taryn Gregory has backed her up and done a, a very good job of coming in and elevating our play to the next level. So from the point guard position, we're pretty pleased with where we sit with our, our student athletes right now. What are you looking uh, forward to the most uh, in your first season with the Islanders? I think one of the biggest pluses we have is we get to drive to work every day. That is a huge plus for me because uh, as I come in every day, I, I look out over Corpus Christi Bay and I think, man, this is really, really cool. The second thing uh, I, I, I really look forward to is the improvement of our players and the development, uh, the fact that they will accept their roles as a team and everybody buys into what we're trying to do and what we're trying to accomplish. And we try to go out and uh, live for each day that we have on the basketball court and our seniors have good senior years. So we have a, a lot at stake as far as trying to get uh, everything organized and get through our November schedule. Um, talk about your approach and practices and, 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 you know, how would you describe your practices and then, you know, what do you hope to get out of them uh, to, that prepares you for what may come in March? Well, I, you know, I think we've been through it before, and, and we know what the preseason is all about. And you begin in, in August, and in your first team meeting, you talk about March. And to a young player, March seems like 14 years, you know, down the trail. So uh, we talk about the things that we want to accomplish when March rolls around. And I've never been sent home in November. I've never had a game that I lost in December that I thought ended my season. January doesn't do it, neither does February. But when you get to March – you got to be right, and you have to pre have prepared for that all year long, and that's what we're hoping for. We're hoping that uh, we can continue to improve every single day. We can get 1% better every single day. By the time March rolls around, we'll be about 40 or 50% better, and, and hopefully we'll have an opportunity at that time to go make a difference in our season. You, you mentioned at the top of the call that you're treating everybody like they're a newcomer, with, so you have 16 newcomers, but the reality is you have – four newcomers mixing in with uh, 11 returning uh, players. What, who are you expecting to make the biggest uh, impact uh, among those the, the newer players? Well, I think uh, uh, first-year players here, Morgan Swartz, has the best opportunity. We graduated Maisha Miles, and we are uh, thin at the post, so Morgan has an opportunity. Number one, she's the oldest of the newcomers. She has an opportunity to step in right away and make a contribution. Ashante Plummer, a freshman from New York, has improved leaps and bounds, and when she adjusts to the physical nature of the college game, she'll make a tremendous contribution. Janae Blunt has a Division I body. Uh, she has to up her game level to the point where she's an everyday player. She shows signs of brilliance, and then the next sign she shows is I'm still a freshman. So she'll get through that, and she'll get better as she goes. And with experience, I think all three of those young ladies are going to make huge contributions for us. Uh, Zenobia Wimbush, another freshman who is adapting to the physical nature of the game, but all those girls are going to have opportunities to make a, an impact, and I think it'll have they'll have a chance in November to show that they are here and ready to play. Questions for uh, Royce Chadwick, the head coach at Texas A&M Corpus Christi. Coach, I guess we'll we'll wrap it up here, but talk a little bit about your tough non-conference schedule. Um, what what are the challenges that that presents for you, and and, and how do you approach that? Well, I think we're a little over uh, a nine-win season. I mean, nine-win team from last year. We are playing Big 12, Big 10, SEC people. Uh, we have to go on the road to to uh, places like Texas, Colorado, TCU. Uh, our our goal when we go into those games is going to be to improve every possession. When we want to come out of there with our head up, we want to come out of there injury free, and we want to we want to be a tougher, stronger team because of the schedule that we played. And you know we're trying to reiterate to our players every single day that. You know, we're trying to get ready for the end. You know, everything we do is going to prepare us for what's coming down uh, late February, early March, and hopefully these games are going to prepare us to keep our head up, keep playing, and, and go up against some of the best competition in the country. So when we roll around into March, we'll have seen it all and been everywhere. All right, Coach, appreciate your time. I wish you the best of luck, and, and good luck Sunday in your opener against Belmont. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, media, that will conclude uh, the preseason basketball call. I uh, hope you found it beneficial. Uh, certainly enjoy uh, 
uh, start of a new season and talking with each of our coaches. Wish everybody the best of luck, safe travels uh, through the season. If there's anything we can do here at the conference office, uh, myself on the men's side or Calhoun Hip on the women's side, please don't hesitate uh, to reach out. Uh, we'll, we'll see everybody on down the road. Thank you.